Hello, everyone, and welcome to another Court of Swords here on Roleplay. What's up? Max is uh, invisible. He's wearing his invisible cloak today. Uh, he'll be joining <laughs> us soon. Maybe. We don't know. Those spells last an amount of time. We have to. Dan, how long does invisibility last? Let's continue the joke. It's not that funny. Let's In, keep it up. Uh, one hour. Okay. He doesn't break concentration. All right. Well, if Matt, well, if Max, no Max somebody soon. slap, kind of, yeah. <laughs> yeah, quick, somebody slap Max in the face. We'll get to see him again. <laughs> He'll be here soon. He'll be here soon. Uh, I never understood. I never understood why in Dungeons and Dragons concentration is based on constitution. You'd think it'd be like a wisdom save, but I guess there's enough of those already. I guess constant constitution is the same. There's a shit ton of them. Why? Why is it if you're like physically strong, you can hang on to spells long? I don't. I don't sense know. To me. No, I, I think constitution. I think I honestly think it should be like a charisma save because that's will. Well, that's and that's the thing, right? The question comes up a lot like charisma and wisdom overlap because there's no stat for willpower. But all of the right. spells that affect or take away your willpower are wisdom saves. Charisma, there's only like four or five different things in the whole game that has a charisma save. It's the same with intelligence saves. They're really, really rare. I don't know why you guys are mm. talking about D and D. Sort. We still got the pre-show. Like we got thirty <laughs> minutes. What are you doing? All, all right, right, all right, all right. Far okay, okay. too early to be D and D conversating. JP, <laughs> have you seen have you seen episode one of season three of Westworld? Has anybody not, seen it yet? I, can, I can't get into any TV show right now. The world is far too interesting yeah. for me to just try to focus on something else. I got to just be refreshing yeah. that social media nonstop. To find out the latest and greatest on what someone else has to say about the coronavirus. It's really addicting. It truly what's is. What's trending now? Yes. Yeah, really what's is. trending yeah. now? Yeah. Like, oh, God, what was it? There was a trend last night that I was like, oh, my God. And then it was some random guy named this word that meant absolutely mm. nothing to me. Some, I think it was a soccer player or something <laughs> like that. Uh, yeah. So, I don't know. It's, yeah. it's a sense. weird world. Well... If you want to watch something that is very, very good. Is it good? Season three. Season three, episode one is better than every episode of both seasons one and two. Like already. Now let me it ask has you this. Nothing, nothing to do with cowboys anymore, which is perfect for me. Let me so ask you good. this. But yeah. As someone yeah. who could tell you loosely the plot of season one and isn't mm -hmm. quite sure if they actually finished slash ever watched at all of season two. Would I be able to watch season three and understand things? It's like a totally different show. Like it's That's got characters heard, yeah. who have a, it's got characters that have a history, obviously like basically season three, the start of it is we're out in the real world and the robots are doing some shit, right? right? They're getting up to some shenanigans, which, which if and I recall watch, was the it, end it, of season two, That's kind of how that started. Yes, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So the idea is season one sets it up where it's like, it's a theme park for, rich people to abuse robots and it kind of asks the question you know are robots sentient it answers that at the end of season one saying yes season two is all about them it's a combination of them escaping and then also like several episodes about like the human soul and then season three seems to be now let's see what the rest of the world looks like outside the park and there's so many tiny environmental details for world building in it like i'm just like blown away so so many little bits they don't explain anything but you figure it out as you watch the episode huh uh jesse pinkman is uh is yeah in it. the Can't breaking the bad the guys actor, in there yeah he's really he's really good in the first episode too yeah. yeah no it's good definitely definitely worth watching i feel like you could probably skip season one and two but you shouldn't because they're good but i get why people don't like season two because it's like a neil stevenson novel it's, it's fun boring. at the beginning and fun at the end and the whole middle is just let me tell you about ancient sumeria i mean not literally but like that's yeah. the thing. It's very niche. And I, it's like, okay, uh, there were a few episodes that, you know, I kind of had to be like, oh, I remember this one. They just talk. The whole I remember episode. I stopped at the episode where they go into uh, like Japan world or whatever it was. Yep. <clears throat> Feudal mm -hmm. world or, or I, I forgot whatever they call yeah, it. Yeah. I don't think, I don't think, I think they call it Shogun world. <laughs> there I think you that's go. the that official name for that world. Yeah. That's a good name for it. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I, I don't know. I, I have not begun watching it. Uh, the last thing I watched was, what is the name? It's some trash Netflix show. Next in fashion. That's what I've watched. I'm, I'm big in next in fashion. Have you, you really even watched it. any, 
You haven't watched any of season two of Ugly Delicious? Oh, no, I finished that. That's true. But there's only like four or okay, five episodes. I, I forget, it was short. It was super short. Yeah, it was like it was like yeah, half as episodes. long. So his his last show was like that too, right? Like I expected it to be longer. And it was like yeah. five episodes. Yeah. Because First he, episode was uh, much books. different than the other ones. The episode on steak was yeah. very good. Uh, the episode on... Oh, God, I forgot. Was it on... What is it? The the vertical spit is what it was on. Uh, I oh, think yeah, that was episode the, like, four. That was really good. Not kebab, but like, yeah. I don't know what it's called. Mm. Yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> funny because when I, uh, I remember growing up and the first time I ever went to New York, which is one of the first times I ever traveled, I saw one of those on like in a store randomly in New York and thought like yeah. that is the most disgusting and unhealthy thing I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> it's so good. And now like 20 years later, 15 years later, I'm, I, I could not crave something more at this point in time. It's just a large <laughs> piece of meat that has been skewered onto a thing that's rotated in front of a piece of heat or a, a heating coolant or a heating metal, I guess I should say. Uh, it looks great. I'd eat it all day. So yeah. Shawarma, <laughs> There's a couple of decent shawarma. Right. Yeah. A couple of decent shawarma joints in, uh, in Vancouver. It's a good, it's like a nice alternative to the, like it's 2 AM and we just left the bar and I don't want to have pizza. Sure. Right. Yeah. Like you, if you can, if you can get some of that, mm, good stuff, be good. It'd be good. <laughs> but yeah, I watched that. And then I've like watched an episode of West wing. I tried watching, I watched the first seasons of uh, the Americans, which I think I've seen twice, but I just forget. Uh, <laughs> so I continue watching it. That's good. I can't, I mean, I can't, I can't, I can't throw shade about rewatching a TV show because guess who's halfway through watching Mad Men again. Nice. It's me. <laughs> That's a good show. Yeah. I know, right? And it's it's to the point now where I don't even I like it's just on. I'm not even watching it. I'm just like, hey, my friends, Don. Yeah, it's got it's Roger. got Max's favorite uh, actress in there too. <laughs> that's that's right, <laughs> Elizabeth Olsen. Yeah, she's on that show. Uh, she's bite sized though. She's real small. Well, she he Don't only likes bite sized Elizabeth Olsen. Um, <laughs> Doesn't like the the whole thing. You know, it's too much, too much Peggy so, Olsen. If you want to know the difference between Adam Coble and I, he's like, I've watched Mad Men, you know, this critically acclaimed, very well written, you know, show sure. that had a great, you know, epic run, whatever. Uh huh. And I'm sure there's a lot of people out here who agree with me. It's like, that's Parks and Rec right now for me. Really? <laughs> I'll just put on Parks and Rec. Hey, like, no, no, put it on in the no aspersions, no aspersions cast at Parks and Rec. Like, I don't know what it is about. So, let me, I'll name shit. some shows Parks and Rec, Seinfeld. The Office, what's uh, Cheers, I guess, would fall into kind of that same category. I cannot yeah. sit through two episodes of that show without being, of any of those shows, without just being unbelievably bored. And I think maybe because <laughs> I mean, there's they're like not... no narrative. Yeah, it's, it's Dan, I yeah. know. I'm as shocked as you. Because it seems like the easiest show to watch. <laughs> I've tried so many times to start those shows and, and go to finish. But maybe because there's like no narrative thread between them. That I can't like no, I guess grand narrative thread. I don't know. The shows are, are bite-sized. Like you're, you're more like, yeah, you need the the thread to like, what the fuck just happened at the end of that episode? Oh god, I need to see the next one. That's yeah, more, I think like that's it. It's the difference. It's the difference between like season one of TNG and then some of the later ones where they're like Borg thread or or like uh, X Files. First and second season of X Files, every episode is a total like bottle. Like you can watch it and never watch another one and not miss anything and vice versa. But Later, it's all about, you know, Fox's abducted sister and like it all gets into that. And I think that's how TV is really like shifted. Right. You don't see that many shows that are like that, like new ones, especially. Yeah. 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 Parks and Rec makes me feel old because I remember watching it and seeing uh, Aubrey, Aubrey Plaza on it and being like, oh, she's so young. Look at her. She's like the, <laughs> the teenage, the teenage intern. And she's she's taken roles for like moms now like she that's yeah. it she's a mom actor she i've seen like two or three movies now where she's like somebody's mom and i'm like did no. you <clears throat> what she's already <laughs> younger than me how is that possible did well, you... speaking of that like parks and rec characters like it's it's so strange to me that i like parks and rec because like a couple of the actors in it i i don't care for like i don't care for Aziz and sorry and i don't i don't really care that much for aubrey plaza but I guess the other ones, oh. like Ron Swanson, just like make up for it. Oh, mm. see, of of those I three, really... I care about the first two more than Ron Swanson, which maybe I don't. 
Aubrey, Aubrey Plaza is really good in Legion. If you haven't seen that, she's that's what really I was going to ask. Did Anna. you finish I Legion? A lot. I never watched the final season. I I, I only ever watched good. the first. I've only watched the first season. I'm going to have to go back and watch like it's three, right? And there is three. And it's done. Season two okay. gets fucking weird. And I've been told season yeah. three is uh, just pure acid. Like it, they just don't fucking nice. care anymore. And it's just bizarre as shit. Um, cool. They start dealing with uh, like alternate realities and they like up the power level of uh, the main character to crazy levels to where he's just like <laughs> creating people and worlds and things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I dig it. So it apparently it gets real oh. crazy, but yeah, yeah, I need to, I need to go back and finish that. And I also want to finish um, Mr. Robot. Cause it's like done, done now. Right. Yeah. I haven't finished that either. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, so I gotta go. I gotta go back and watch that. Maybe I'll watch that next. There's a lot of shows I want to finish. I just can't. I can't get into. Or I'll good. just watch Mad Men one more time, or The Wire. I'll just keep watching both of those forever. Never finished The Wire either. I need. It's one of those things. I got to season two and was bored in the first half of season two, which I've been told is a sticking yes. point for a lot of people. So yeah, season two, mm-hmm. season two and season five are both kind of like like I really like season two because I I don't know I like those like the, the characters in it are really good. I like them a lot, but. Yeah, I can see why you kind of tailor off. And season five, I've watched once. I never like. I get to the end of season four, and I'm like, yep, it's fine. I don't, I don't. We're good. I just well, the, watch Game of Thrones. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I feel like a lot of the older shows, like The Wire and West Wing, come to mind. Don't they have like 24 episodes in a season, or some like some do? Because yeah, like West, I think West Wing is seven seasons, and I think they're 24 episodes, and each <laughs> one's an hour yeah. and 45 minutes long. So it's a fucked on a tv so it takes forever to get through it feels like yeah. character yeah the wire are the, so the wire is 13 13 to 10 but okay yeah there's definitely a point where that shifted tng is the same way all the star treks like x Files, same thing it was like a season is 24 yeah, yeah. and that is it's a lot <laughs> it's a lot for yeah. sure yeah so yeah I, i'm all about uh, next in fashion it's great it's just it's fucking <laughs> weird people i've I've never thought about the the act of clothes, like making clothes, and it's fascinating to me that so much goes into it. So that's where I'm at. That's, that's I'm yeah, gonna yeah. bust out the next. I'm gonna be the next in fashion. I'm just gonna create the most beautiful <laughs> dresses with beautiful sequencing and hemming so many pants that you're gonna be. You're not even ready. honestly. I would. I would support. You're I would support that ready. aggressive. Are we, that aggressive are pivot like suddenly jp's like live show? broadcasting Maybe. yeah broadcasting i'm out fashion that is my new best friend yeah <clears throat> some of the, the some of the uh designers on there uh like interesting and also hilarious because they only deal in extremes and in, in the sense of what their like uh expertise is so one of them just straight up says like yeah i'm i'm big into black attire and uh goth so all of his clothes are all black and they're all goth, no matter what. So it's like, all right, make a red carpet dress. And he's like, all right, I got it. And then it's just like all black dress that also is goth. And it's great. It's awesome. Yeah. All right. It's really good. <laughs> some people are only it. into patterns there. So you get some like weird fucking crazy patterns that they... Have you ever seen a digital pattern printer, Adam? That shit's crazy as fuck. Yeah. Yeah. They're weird. Hey. Yeah. That <laughs> stuff is crazy as hell. It's super interesting. Yeah. But, yeah. The other thing, and we'll go back to the coronavirus here. I watched uh, a thing. <laughs> I think it was Big Brother Brazil, maybe. Oh, I have I have a friend who told me about this. I know yeah, what you're talking about. So yeah. So today they've been in they've been in the Big Brother house, cut off from all social media, all news, everything since January. And today they finally told them about what's going on in the world live. And so you get to see these people who all oh, it was Big Brother Germany, I guess. You get to see all these people who, for the first time ever, learned what's going on in the world right now since January. And, like, they all start out all, like, oh. happy and smiling. And then a couple of them are, like, nurses and doctors and OBGYNs, and they're just like, oh, God. Like, you can't even – it's yeah. in Portuguese, so unless you speak Portuguese, I couldn't understand it. But you could just tell the, like, physical reactions that everyone had where they were just like – Fuck. Yeah. Yeah. I um I also I also really like the movie Twenty Eight Days Later. Uh or yeah. I guess Blast from the Past by Brendan Fraser. That's also it very another much felt option like a solid in that one. category. It's a great one. It very that much be, felt like that. Yeah. That would be the comparable thing. I think it would hit it hits more could you please silence your cell phone? Please? Yeah, silence your cell phones, please. 
Sir. <laughs> okay. Sir. Yeah. Can you stop that gesture? Sir. Yes. <laughs> um, uh, what the fuck was I saying? Right. You know, it would, it would, it would hit like a lot more impactful. I feel like in that way, because the rest of us get to see it like slowly progress and get, you know, worse and more of a big of a thing. So we're like able to yeah. acclimate to how things are happening in the world. But then you just hear like, oh yeah, no, it's bad. There's the whole world's pretty much locked down. Oh yeah. Like no one's going to bars. <laughs> no one's going to restaurants. Well, idiots are going <laughs> like, to bars, but yes. Yeah, idiots. Yeah. Sorry. I should Everyone say. Else oh, yeah. Happy St. No Patrick's Day, import. everybody. Yeah. Do you see those dumb <laughs> fucks in Boston say. going to the bars they're out there just going, getting drunk and the fucking morons. Yeah. 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 Anyways. <sighs> <laughs> Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> that would be that would be a mind fuck, I feel like. Totally. It would be oh, yeah, the dude, only thing yeah. I can think of is like yeah. blast from the past kind of shit where you come out of a bunker and you're like, What the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> I slept too I long. Think, I think yeah. that there was also a Big Brother Canada, maybe, where like they were they were put in at the beginning of March, and I think they just got their first update yesterday or t- or tomorrow or something like that. And they're all sitting around the dinner table, like thinking about what might be happening in the world. Um, and some of them are saying like, oh, I bet you it's just a shit show. I bet you like all this stuff has happened and we, we have no idea that it's like terrible out there and blah, blah, blah. So it's real fascinating to see that stuff. <laughs> it's real crazy. Yeah. 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 That's nuts. <sighs> Dan, what have you been up to? What have you been watching? What have you been playing? <laughs> uh, well, our governor just closed all restaurants here, so we can't go. I'll eat anymore. Did they close the restaurants or mo- to go, but yep, you can still get takeout, or are they just closed? Closed. Just, just takeout. Okay. Just takeout only. That's how it is in San Fran. Yeah. yeah. And, and all movie theaters are closed, so not a lot that. to do is that hang around the house all day. Yep. Yeah. If you're looking for a really good Netflix show, it's the longest running Netflix show. It's uh, Frank and Gracie. Really. Uh, Frank and Grace. Huh. Frankie and Grace. It's uh, okay. on uh, Netflix. Yeah, it's with Jane Fonda and. Uh, the other lady that was in a lot of 80, funny 80 movies, I can't remember her name ever. But I think I've seen that before, but I never I think I saw it. the first episode of that. Is that the one where they are divorcing their husbands and they're getting married or something like that? Or their their husbands they're, are getting married? The, their Tomlin. husbands. There you go. Their husbands, um, who are played by the lawyer from Law and Order and um Michael Sheen are the guy the they president have been of se- West Wing, yeah. Yeah, they've been <laughs> secretly gay lovers for 30 years That's and they're what it was. breaking up and divorcing with um their older 80 now 80 wives and then the wives have to move in together and then the other the, the, they are now a couple and it's like it follows both of the couples throughout throughout the um all the episodes and it's been has really good writing huh the, it gets Watch better it with each season like i've been just binging season four through six the last season's coming out next uh year and it's oh. been really really good gotcha it's funny i can't i can't think of I'm trying to think of a Jane Fonda movie and I know they exist, but I cannot recall even a single one. Uh, like on golden Blast pond. The isn't that? No, I'm just kidding. Is that a Jane? <laughs> I don't. Yeah. Blast, that's right. She played Brendan Fraser. So yeah, she was, she was in Barbarella, right? Was that her? All I know is there's mm-hmm. a big chunk of the Vietnam war documentary that's on Netflix about, uh, about her because during the Vietnam war, she went to Vietnam and was like, Hey, look at all these humans that were throwing napalm at. Maybe we should stop having the war. And America was like, shut up, Jane Fonda. Yeah. And nobody yeah, no, hired Jane. her for years. Yeah. She's big on protesting. She still does protesting today. Well, oh, that's for, right. Um, yeah. She got arrested yeah, yeah. pretty recently for that, didn't she? Yep. Yeah. yeah she, um, she still gets so arrested. The dude from The Good Place. Um, mm-hmm. What's his name? Which one? The guy from Cheers. Ted Danson. Ted Danson. Oh, Ted yeah. Danson. Yeah. 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 Mm hmm. 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 Okay. All right. How long are those? Are those an hour long or 30 minute shows, Dan? Uh, I think 30 minutes. Is there a narrative thread yeah. between all of them? Yep. It's a long <laughs> narrative thread. That the okay. whole time start to the Maybe end. I'll try watching that tonight. We'll see. We'll see. How that it's goes. good. Frank and yeah. Gra- I'm uh, adding it to my list. There we go. Okay. Grace and Frankie. That's Grace and Frankie. Grace and Frankie. Okay. Yeah. I searched for it, Frank and it didn't come up. <laughs> it's a little slow, but it, was, it gets better and better with each season. I promise. Okay. All right. I'll report back if I watch it. Uh, Other than that, um, I played uh, 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 Neo Two, yeah, um, which is. How do you, do you feel think about, about Neo, Neo 2, Two, JP? I don't, yeah, know, I don't was... know. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, it's one of those games where I really want to like it, 
and then I play it and I'm like, oh, this is great. And then I get to a thing and I'm like, wow, this is awful. Like, who the fuck thought this was a good idea? (laughs) And then I just get told that I'm bad and I should learn to play. I'm like, well, that's not going to add to anything to the conversation except make me angry. So maybe I shouldn't play this game. Uh, (laughs) It it makes me realize and appreciate just how balanced and polished um, from software games are in comparison. That's what I meant by my tweet. 100% 100% what I meant. Yeah. I agree. 100%. Yeah, just like it, this game could be good, but there's a lot of just like timing issues with bosses and the way things work. It's just like just needs a little more fine tuning and it could be great, but it's just things, little things hold it back. And, and the combat's a little, a lot of stuff going on at once. It's yeah. a little overwhelming. What, uh, what boss did you get up to? I guess just to use the name without or a description. Um, I uh, I beat the snake boss after hours of just frustration and just hating okay. the fuck out of that boss. And then I rage quit after that. But I was Makes using sense. the axe. Yeah. But yeah, I'm, I'm restarting with the magic right now, and it seems a little better, but I'm not sure yet. Yeah. The, uh, I think because I, I, I fought the snake boss in the demo, I one-shot them when I got to them in, in retail. But there's a mm-hmm. boss. Any Any boss that, like, uh goes outside the realm of a humanoid <laughs> so if you're fighting like a yokai monster just mm-hmm. sucks it's just some bullshit mm-hmm. mechanic that they tried to throw in there to like make it interesting and yeah. different and it's just bad uh mm-hmm. there's an owl boss that i hope you quit the game before <laughs> you get to him. didn't see it yeah <laughs> because man he it is just bad it's a he flies a lot and when they go into the yokai realm there's another mechanic where you can like go and target this other entity in that uh in that realm and if you kill it it Mm -hmm. knocks the boss out of it but while doing that the other boss is flying around and constantly shooting shit at you and the thing is constantly shooting shit at you like projectiles that you can't like you can't physically see everything that's going on in the world at the time when you need to so you basically are just frantically trying to kill this eye and hoping to God that the boss is just fucking off over in another corner. Um, and it's just a fucking nightmare. It's just a lot of, yeah, a lot of annoyingness. So, yeah, some weapons also just seem way easier than others. Like the slower weapons seem to be way harder at bosses than the fast weapons, like the dual axes or yeah. um, the one handed weapons. So it like each weapon doesn't feel quite as balanced as it is in dark souls either. Yeah. Or like I never felt like super punished by using a slow weapon. I've learned how to adapt, but in this game, it just feels like if you use a slow weapon, you're really punished against some really some a lot of the bosses. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, that and the even fact with the that different stances. I feel like in Dark Souls, you get a lot more uh, room for error in the sense that you learn from taking hits from the boss, not dying to the boss. Whereas in Neo, if you get hit, you die. And then you have to go back mm-hmm. and like try to figure out what you could have done better after the fact. So the learning curve is much slower. Like you learn slower yeah. in Neo because of that. Um, yeah. It, so. it seems like if you get hit, like you get hit multiple times, almost guaranteed. Oh yeah. Some of yeah. The bosses. combos just yeah. fuck you. Cause stagger, especially if you're wearing mm-hmm. light armor, like you just get staggered and the bosses don't have that because they're all wearing like medium and heavy armor. Uh, so yep. they just like power through your attacks, which should be staggering them. Cause that's how you're, interpreting the game from whenever you play it it's frustrating yeah yeah so yeah i don't know it's all right i'm gonna probably try to finish it uh i think i'm like 60 percent of the way through um but we'll see we'll see yeah it'll be a journey for you a spiritual it, journey it will be i i have i definitely got very upset against the owl boss uh, <laughs> <I> was, <laughs> that was the most raged i've been on stream in a very long time um but we'll see how the rest of the, the game is. Uh, I must give the game credit for one thing. I've never seen a snake with big ass tits. That was like. There's a lot of that. There's a lot. Of yeah, them. they were <laughs> huge knockers. I didn't know how it stood up. It was just, you ain't familiar big with old snake mommy is, are you? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of that. I mean, I'm not even imagining. Shows. I'm not even imagining a snake with like the upper body of a woman, like a like a harpy type thing. I'm just imagining a snake. And they just glued some spheres on the front. That's of it, pretty so. much what it is because mm-hmm. she doesn't have arms. Yep. She just has a pair of tits and that's it. She has no arms. She's just a snake with uh, some tits on her. And yeah. And she's you, fucking man. annoying because when she does her pariable move, there's 
three different moves that can come from it, but the wind up to those three different moves is so fast that you literally just have to guess which one it's going to be. And you're going to have to guess the parry window for it. It's a fucking nightmare. It's fucking, I'm triggered again already. I have to... <laughs> you just need to get good, JP. Just get yeah. good. Yeah, JP, uh, that's obviously. True. Oh. Yeah. It's true. That's, I mean, that's what chat tells me. That's what chat tells me. But yeah. Uh, Max, what were you eating earlier? I saw you were chowing down on something. I saw you made I tacos the other night. Were eating some more tacos? Yeah. Yeah. There's leftover tacos and assembled some. That's why I was slightly not in my chair um, when you guys started. Well, not, was, you were uh, not was, in your chair. Yeah, <laughs> you were was, like yeah. sitting off. I like how I said slightly yeah, not in my chair. I had like, to fix it. Yeah. <laughs> there was something here, but it wasn't me. <laughs> um, yeah, I just I threw together some leftover tacos and just assembled them and heated them all up. Yeah. They were really good, but I uh, did a quick little cooking stream last night. I'm thinking I'm going to do more of that, too, since I'm not going to be going out and order. I've been already trying to cut back on, on like, ordering food. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of a benefit of, of the whole quarantine stuff is that I just – Bought a bunch of food. I didn't hoard. I bought a bunch of food, and then um, I've just been cooking a bunch. So yeah. I think I might just do some streams in there. Might as well. Different yeah. kind of stiff. Yeah, it's it's the way. I played God of War to the person that reminded me to. <laughs> no, you, you I was about God to say, you know, if you're yeah. looking for things to do, Max. Um... <laughs> Although you know what, quarantine time, no better time to play God of War, right? There's Damn. so many games. I, I, if you played God of War right now, I'd actually be upset. There's a lot of games, yeah, that are, that are and not the like you know. six or seven plus games that are coming out in the past two weeks and the next two weeks. Yeah. Yeah. You know what's funny though? Is like I went to the store a day, like the night before all this shit popped off. I think like whatever day it was where everybody just went to the fucking grocery stores. Yeah. Because I had an inkling. I'm like, people are starting to get a little freaked out. I think it's gonna get worse. So I just went at like four in the morning the grocery store and even then there was like no toilet paper and no like that was already starting do you have um, hebs I I w- in in austin where yeah, do you we go had hebs okay i went to i would if i was getting like proper like i went to a walmart because it was closer and i figured there were 24 I, hours i think it was like three in the morning i think <clears> and and i don't i know this is san antonio i would think austin is the same uh hebs have started closing at 8 p.m so that they can restock effectively from 8 p.m to i think 8 a.m probably um because of how I many thought HEB like, was going to be People are going crazy. It wasn't an option when I went because it was already like I purposely went at like three in the morning because I'm like, they're going to be restocking stuff if they are. Won't be a lot of people there. I don't have to encounter a lot of people. Um, and yeah, I just stuck up. There was a point to this. Oh, yeah, I don't know. I went sl- <laughs> like right before. I'm just so happy I went because it was literally right before everybody cleaned out everything. You know what I mean? Like when I yeah. went, plenty of like meats, plenty of canned goods, well, all that stuff. It was all good. The, the thing is, is like, we're not going to run out of that stuff. It's that people are panic no, buying. No, no, no. So like, you're just going to have to wait for it. That's the biggest issue. That's, 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 well, that's my favorite, went, my it, favorite yeah. stories about this whole thing is people getting busted, being shitlords about it, where they're like, yeah, we spent $70,000 <laughs> on like toilet paper and disinfectant and wipes and shit. And now we're f- selling it all on Amazon at like a 5,000% markup. So yeah. if you want toilet paper, it's a hundred bucks a roll. But I read the other day that, that apparently the, some guy that was doing this, uh, know he ran into yeah. some like other unrelated legal problem. And then the government just redistributed all of his shit as part of his punishment. They oh, were that's like, awesome. Yeah. yeah. Well, he's got all this toilet yeah. paper. So, uh, come on and get it. And I'm just like, Oh Yes. Robin hid those yeah. people so hard. Just they go get him, them. Yeah, <laughs> That's awesome. I don't know. If, I'm assuming it was the same guy, but they made him redistribute like all the stuff he hoarded, including like a bunch of hand sanitizer and, and all that. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. Good. That's great. I, had not I already had toilet story. paper and paper towels. I went to Sam's club like three days before all this stuff was starting to get crazy. Yeah. Just cause I needed to go. I already knew it was kind of, it was kind of like starting, but, um, I saw the idea that, of just uh, buying toilet paper. So, so I saw crazy. that Costco was like rationing their toilet paper behind like a closed off section now, because people are just going uh-huh. to Costco and buying like yeah a thousand rolls of toilet paper for some fucking stupid reason. I tell, tell you what though, since we're in the entertainment you know business, or whatever, what there isn't enough of is skits of people pretending like they're dealing drugs. But it's toilet paper. Yeah. I need to see more of Definitely. those. There's Dan, not enough videos. Dan's doing a little bit of that. Dan, Dan's done some, uh, <laughs> you know, some drug-related TP selling. You know, 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, I cook you up. I got so roll, man. I got I got mega so roll. I got regular videos. roll. I got store brand. I cook you up, brother. I got that pandemic. I've seen like five different variations of that. Of He's that, got like, the mother concept. I need it. I need it. I'm itchy, but not here. I'm itchy down there. Yeah. I've seen people have pictures where it's literally just like like dime bags of uh, the fucking sanitizer, where it's like just in you know. Oh, God. <laughs> And they have like toilet paper bits on a scale. I'm like, uh huh, well, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like drugs to get it. Yeah. It's, it's good. I'm saying, just get with your with your delivery food. Just <clears throat> just save up all your napkins. Yeah. Have has anyone tried uh, <laughs> Zeke? Use, I know you use the food delivery thing. Have you tried that in the past week? Like, is it a shit show or? That's why I had to leave. Oh, really? That was people delivering. Yeah, okay. my Walmart grocery grocery list or grocery delivery was that was here and apparently amazon fresh is is cool about it they're just like drop it on your fucking porch yeah whereas amazon fresh is no longer delivering anymore so i had to go to through walmart oh and And they won't drop it on your porch thankfully i heard the fucking phone call and i went out and checked yeah because if i wasn't there they wouldn't have left it yeah they would have taken it back yeah well you guys you guys are still still out there buying toilet paper that's easy mode so I ordered a length of industrial hose and a big wrench and I just went over to the fire hydrant. I cracked that thing open, put the hose on the end. I got myself a Texas bidet. It's all good. <laughs> yeah. There you go. That's the way to do I'm it. I'm just slinging through the bathroom window. You're good to go. Yeah. Yep. I saw the bidet so prices crazy. have skyrocketed too on Amazon. Probably. Were, yeah. Were, Bad time to buy a bidet if you didn't do it early. I'm going to, I'm going to hold off. Yeah. What my thing is too, is like, yeah, if things got like really, really bad, I mean, they were pretty bad, Max. I don't know. I just if you've fucking. I would just go outside. to the tub and like wipe my ass in the tub or something and oh, just wash yeah, that shit yeah. away. No, that that's the, yeah. Just there's a shower next to the toilet for it's a reason. Easy. You're you're not going. You shouldn't be going anywhere anyways. Just take a shower. Just use the restroom and take a shower. Who fucking cares? What else you got to do? Yeah. It's not like you're going outside. Went to the gas station before this. I don't know. <laughs> what, Here's the question: the When's the last time you've been outside? Me. Uh, yeah. Not to use the rest. Uh, probably about ten days, eleven days. Well, no, 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 that's a lie. It was last Friday. Cause I had to to take go Holly. somewhere, I should say, not yeah, like yeah, step yeah. outside or take the dog for a walk. I, or, I had to take or, the dog you know. to daycare last Friday. That was the last time I was outside. Yeah. I've just been going to the gas station that's like up the road. Yeah, and there I like have a very specific like I know exactly what the fuck I need. I have Purell in my pocket. <laughs> I'm, I'm very conscious of what I've touched. I'm not touching my face. I'm barely, barely even breathing. <laughs> um, but yeah, I went there and got some beer because it's St. Patty's Day and a Red Bull because I really needed it today. There you go. There you go. Oh fuck! What <laughs> was that? A, what was that related oh, to? You seem you seem stressed. Max. It's just the beginning, man. It's just yeah. the beginning. Oh yeah, I'm getting work, fatigue it's... already of just seeing it just in the news, like. Twitter fucking sucks even more than it normally does. You better get just used like, to it, man. We're in this for like know, three or four months. We're going to have like months of this shit. Yeah. Dude, evil, That's evil, get worse, evil, man. Matt Col- evil Matt Colville posted a, um, a news article earlier today that said we should buckle up for up to a year. I saw that, yeah. Shit. Which, it's possible. It's totally possible, yeah. Uh, which is crazy. Uh, but yeah. whatever, I guess. Yeah. You know. Well, here, here's the, it, the biggest issue is this be the last thing and we'll run the thing, but this is unprecedented <laughs> historic. We're going to spend some time talking about this. The yeah, biggest right, issue obviously. about all of it is people like San Francisco is going on lockdown and stuff. None of that matters unless the entire country goes on lockdown, because that just means that San Francisco is yeah. going to be in lockdown for longer. Cause like the whole point of lockdown is to stop spreading the virus around. Yeah. But yep. if San Francisco is on lockdown and someone from, somewhere else not on lockdown just visit san francisco well there you go the whole fucking thing's ruined <laughs> it's pointless yeah so people yeah. exactly like people people who have the have the the germs and who like put themselves in a position with a bunch of like people who don't have it they're that uruk from from helm's deep right but instead of yes. a bomb they have covid19 and they're just running into the mall and killing everyone around and just yeah. letting all the orcs in oh yeah don't be that uruk kids Go back to whatever hole you came from in Mordor and stay there. Yeah. And a lot of better. A lot of states too are starting to like make, I mean, uh, certain states have already made their own me- measures as Dan was just saying. I think his state said that there's no more food. I think, uh, apparently Aaron just told me that, um, 
St. Louis just said it's carry out only as well. Uh, but until that's like nationwide, none of it matters. Like Florida is going to ruin us all. Florida is just so stupid. So I mean, are we surprised that Florida is being a problem? No. Like, <laughs> not at all. Is that, is that even really a shock at all? Do you see that? Everybody's shot at the Disney? beach hanging out. Yeah, that but, sounds like Florida. Oh my god. Just Jesus. rampant idiocy. So let's just close the Florida border. Let's let them just do <laughs> just let them have be them pool. Just put a bunch of dynamite Sorry, right Florida, along the border and blow it off. And just keep let it go. Yeah, send yeah, it, yeah. yeah. Let's just put sea. some charges and yeah. we'll just, <laughs> and just let them go out. Florida yeah. still having their primary tonight, which so everyone's going to gather in big lines together and all over the country, the state. Yeah, the yeah. primary stuff too is crazy. Yeah, that that's a the whole timing other of all this is. It's crazy. Obviously, yeah. obviously, the correct answer to do is to just get rid of the democratic process altogether and install some kind of emperor of America, and then right, just who just needs elections ever again? <laughs> right, I mean, exactly. All I for bet, safety. I bet you we see and that, yeah, something and that's, similar that's to where, safety. And that's where it becomes like we start getting into the like not there's it's the edge of the conspiracy thought. Like real mm. conspiracy is that this is a, a man-made orchestrated pandemic, but there's, I'm, I'm interested in the, the political thought around it and how various people are going to attempt to take advantage of this kind of situation. That's the stuff that oh, they me, already are. from a distance. I'm like, Ooh, look at, look at this. A hundred percent. It's already, these, yeah, I mean, look at these emergency powers. Yeah. There it's yeah. You can get very political, very fast with the whole COVID shit. Uh, but yeah, it's yeah. a lot. United Empire. The thing I keep t- talking about whenever I stream with Chad is like, remember when we all thought 2019 was the worst it could get? We were like, please get us out of this year. Oh God, I would give everybody so, was so much hopeful right now to go back. So hopeful at the beginning of the year, they were oh like, this is the year we leave all this shit behind. The last three years, they've been terrible. We're gonna we're gonna recover. 2020 is gonna be the year we get better. Hmm. I was like was going to the gym and stuff too. Really excited. Great. And then they're like, close those gyms down. The disease is everywhere. Yeah. I'm like, well, fuck. <laughs> it's like when I switched over to Android and it was the Android phone, the Samsung, whatever the fuck, the one that blew up and became a federal <laughs> oh, offense. Oh, yeah, the exploding phone. Yeah. I yeah. think it's a that little was a, bit that was another worse thing where than I'm like, that. But yeah. I'm going to switch. <laughs> I have fucking terrible timing with any of this shit. <laughs> Dude, so I'm like, still work. Get into shape. You don't need to go to a gym to get into shape. That's just an it helps, excuse. Though. I'm, no, I'm going to be, I'm still, I'm still going to be working out. Don't buy now, Ring Fit, though. It's just Did you see that? Did you see Ring Fits being price gouged right now for the uh, the Switch? Oh, really? Right. Oh, yeah. that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. Everyone, I mean, it makes Those sense in like a disgusting way. I think but, they're yeah. up to like fifteen hundred yeah. bucks or something on eBay now for a Ring Fit. Fifteen hundred dollars? Jesus. There's a uh, there was an Animal Crossing uh, water thing that went live last night. And I think it was up to thirteen grand or something on Amazon this morning from resellers, and people water? were still buying it. What do you mean? It's just like a little water it's just thing, a thing like this, like cup. Like Amazon, uh, Animal Crossing, or like a company. Tumblr. I saw it was fifty, fifty one hundred bucks that that Amazon sellers market. Yeah, Animal Crossing thing. It's because everybody is super anxious and super fucky, and Animal Crossing <laughs> is seen as this very like gentle, relaxing uh, intellectual property. Yeah. And so everybody is like taking the their anxiety and sponsors Animal Crossing right? this oh, week. Okay. Well, the thing is, everybody is <laughs> okay. they're dumping all their anxiety into Animal Crossing, and then people are monetizing that anxiety. They're like, yes. This will make you feel better. This tumbler with some raccoons on it. And you're like, ah, I need it. And then they true. get the tumbler and then it doesn't make them feel better. That's true. Can, I mean, no, we got to play D and D and all that stuff. But, um, can <laughs> we talk about how we? much fucking money that animal crossing is going to sell? Like how do you have any idea how much that shit is just going to, it is going to be crazy. I think it's going to be insane. How much probably that, that, yes. That, uh, yeah titles ships and sells i mean i think mm-hmm. most games coming out right now are going to do quite well yeah. because of all this yeah but specifically the beauty animal of animal crossing, crossing everybody's it's... talking about it and it's yeah. chill it's like an escape you know sure. what I mean? yeah. um and you can play with your friends yeah where are we gonna say dan maybe maybe yeah that it's like animal crossing is not meant to be played like a little bit you're supposed to play it over the course of months so it's like a perfect yeah. game for right now yeah yeah, little little hit of dopamine every time you pop it open, and the little animals are like, "Everything's okay," and you're like, "All I have to do is chop down some trees, sell some shells, and my life is okay." And it's I, like, meanwhile, Nero, Rome is on fire, so maybe maybe you could do something about that. No, Animal Crossing. Yeah, I feel like I'm too yeah. cynical to play Animal Crossing because I log in and just see this fucking 
piece of shit Tom Nook there asking me for money on <laughs> fucking loan. It's like, I'm not doing this. Where's Tom. my fucking bells? I'm not giving you the fucking yeah. bells, Tom. I'm uh, not. I, I got a delay. I'm in a crisis, Tom. I can't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. God. I love everyone that's like. I'll- isn't there like a huge okay. contingent of the Animal Crossing fan base that's like angry that Nintendo hasn't released it yet? Like they're trying to get them I don't to release know that it anybody, early? Yeah, I don't know that anybody's like actually angry about it, but I think there are a lot oh, of I'm kind sure of like act- weird. Come on, there's probably. I mean, okay, yes. Like no, nobody worth listening <laughs> to. It's but I, I feel like there are, <laughs> there are people, yeah, there are people who are like, I'm sad, give me the thing. And Nintendo's like, we will, just <clears> wait. And they're like, no, now. Right. Like there are there are fans who have gotten again, gotten anxious and have suddenly turned into like Veruca Salt. Right. Where they're just like, isn't he Daddy, released Frozen I want too early? Now. You released the game. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah, it's true. I will say too. Let, last thing from mine. There is no do better it. time for us to be a streamer. I'm very thankful for what we do. And I, I feel mm-hmm. very bad and, and hopeful for you guys that have to deal with anything you got to sort out for, you know, your own financial situation and, and work and all that. I can't even imagine what kind of stress that is. Oh, yeah. So for, for my part, anyways, and I'm sure for a lot of ours, like we're going to do our best to, to do what we do, you know, and be there as much as we can. Oh, yeah. We're, we're in an unbelievably uh, better scenario than so many other people right now. Uh, so you better, think, better believe. I think up lucky. to... I mean, I think up to up to a certain point, right? Because we're parasites, and if the host entity dies, we're also fucked. So, like, we're not saying proof. everyone's gonna die that watches us. Adam. what the fuck? Are you I don't mean. I don't mean literally. I mean, like, so here's the thing: people aren't getting paid as much, right? Not everybody sure. is get still get income coming in. So when they look at their expenses and they're like, mm, "What can I get rid of?" You and you and you, and I can't afford the fifteen bucks a month. So it's like, sure, yeah. We hope that you're okay, so you can keep making sure we're okay, and we can all be okay together. That is true. Yeah. Yeah. hundred yeah. percent that too, obviously. But yeah. Just in yeah, the sense nice. that we don't have to physically go anywhere for our job. Right. We're, you know. Yeah. I did read somewhere though, Max today that, uh, I think, I think they said that 80% of Americans will get the, the virus no matter what, like it's just inevitable. So don't get too yeah. excited. <laughs> the fact that we, <laughs> that we work from home, like, we're probably still <laughs> fucked. We're probably still going to get it. If you buy anything from the store, people cough all over that shit. You better be like wiping it down with some alcohol swabs or something because you're going to get it. I don't know if, what is it? Where did you hear this stat that 70 to 80% of us will, will get it? Are you sure that's not? Some, I, read, I read 70. Yeah, there was a CBC, there was a CBC mm-hmm. article uh, that said 70% was like the high end of the estimation, but not unreasonable. Yeah. And mm-hmm. Navitac is 100% right. Like way to up the fear. Some people need a reality check. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> but other people, they know how crazy it is. So just ignore what we're saying. We're just a bunch of Twitch broadcasters. And if it makes you yeah. feel better, about 80% of people have mild to no symptoms. So that is true. You get too, it. Yeah. It's not like you're going to be instantly sick. Yeah. No, not at all, so. Yeah. Best thing you can do is just keep yourself healthy and, and um, hygienically uh, aware. Yeah. And don't listen to Twitch Wash streamers your for hands, your, guys. your daily source I'm of sure news. you haven't heard that. <laughs> <laughs> There's plenty of other places to get your news. Don't get it from streamers like us, because we just regurgitate stuff that we read on the internet. So who knows how factual that is? Uh, let's play some D and D. It's 45 D&D? minutes. All right, let's do it. Thing. Let's watch this recap. recap. Yeah. Yeah. Previously on Court of Swords. Presented with several options, our party decides the best course of action is to Get seek out someone win, the last holdout of the Court of Swords army here in our territory, with the hope that he and his soldiers can act as escorts for the Embers of Imix, leading them north to the Shulin Valley and safety. Bonnie and the aspect of Imix currently possessing her rebuff the party's efforts to save the court, believing that this isn't just an attack by the Mara, but a signal that the Age of Heaven is ending. She's happy to see it go, in fact, and sends the party away, telling them to do what they must. Ramus and Bushra deepen their friendship with a conversation about mercy, bloodline, and a common pain. They're both orphans, after all. Ramus suggests the giants might help them fight against the Mara, and Bushra agrees, but believes Maharib to be the emissary they need to make that happen. Awut is clearly crumbling from the inside under all the pressure, and he gives Berg and Maharib permission to raid the storage room. It's mostly empty, but Berg gets a new axe. It's not magic, but it'll do. 
The party heads out into the mountains, following Bushra's lead, until they discover an ancient temple, once abandoned, now the command post of Southern Wind, his lieutenant, most loyal sword, and the remnants of the army, a somewhat paltry but battle-hardened battalion. As the party makes themselves comfortable, they can't help but wonder if they're guests or prisoners. God damn it, Adam. Are we I'm guests saying. or are we prisoners? Hmm? I think you're Devo. Are we not men? I think that's like mm-hmm. Devo. <laughs> are we dancers, uh, Adam? <laughs> I don't. How what do is that a reference to? Every dancers time someone says, are we yeah, every time are somebody we says something like that, is that a Daft Punk song? Is that? <laughs> I don't know. No, I don't it's know a killer the, song. I don't get that reference. Uh, no, that sounds oh, okay. like a Daft Punk song. It does. That's why <laughs> it I does. Like, yeah. yeah, I thought it was a Daft. The Killers. It's, uh, it's from the Killers. What song? I think that's actually the name of the song. Maybe it might be. Like are it. we? What's the name of that? Oh, is it? No, that's not it. I don't know. I'll figure it out. I'm reading chat. I'm getting a lot of yeah. Wrong figure things. figure out the name of that killer song. I definitely don't want to listen. There's to. a lot of robot. Yeah. There's a, a lot of <clears throat> robots in the chat that are just saying "human" over and over as if they're trying to. You're all robots. All right. Prove we know it. That this yeah. Is all we see you. Yeah, we see you, motherfuckers. We all could be robots, JP. That's true. Think That's about true. it. Simulation. If the simulation is still no, it would have failed. This this is the game over already. <laughs> That just lent, that just lends hey, Adam, to do you want to play Dungeons and simulation. Dragons? Because I would. I would love to. No, eh, no. I mean, I could take it or leave it. <laughs> <laughs> My will to do anything is slowly sapping away, so there whatever. There yeah, yeah. <laughs> yep. All right, well, let's talk about goals. Um, Max, Go this is first. your warning. No, this is, you, you want me to do you first or you want me to save you? Because you got, you're the only one that needs to add a goal. I just want to, you ready? Okay, well, what ready. is it? I'm good. You want, what are your goals? Uh, I'm just going to help they? get into the temple. I want to get into the temple like uh, Ramus wants to. It seems like a good one. And then the other ones are, they're still fine. Oh, you've okay. actually. So for Berg's, for Berg's goals, so I'll, do, I'll, do a quick, I'll do a quick review of all the goals. Let me know if anybody wants to change anything. So sure. uh, Ramus, get into the temple peacefully. Convince the soldiers to talk to us and get Southern Wind to help us. Yes. Those are the goals I have for you. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, Berg, uh, replace the hammer with something more significant. Evacuate the cultists and get us into the temple. Those should That's be good. okay. The only one I don't think I really could do much on today, depending on what happens here. I think we'll be here for a bit. Is the evacuate slash relocate? Yeah, I think that the group of you were discussing potentially trying to convince Southern Wind to evacuate the cultists. So as long as that comes up and Berg pushes for it, you'll earn the working on. So sure, yeah, I will keep it for that because then it's related. Even if there's a working, I just want to make sure there's a possibility to work on it and not just have a blank slot. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, those are fine. Uh, ten, 10 pillars. I've got uh, convince the embers to take action, ask Agni about the void metal, and find out how the cadre has survived this long. Um, I've changed two of those. Um, discover how the cadre might. has survived. I'm keeping that one. Yeah. Um, I am changing my first goal to uh, convince the cadre to join our cause. Okay. <laughs> and leave the camp alive. Okay. You know, that would be an easy goal for anybody that isn't Zeke. Uh, okay. Mm. Cool. Uh, and then. Uh, How do I Maharim. take that? I, I, yeah, I think that's just. You got to take it face value. He's, he's saying you die a lot, Zeke, I think. Yes, I'm pointing out that I am afraid for your life and that I, I think it'll be difficult. No, I'm Not that we're going to die, but specifically you, Zeke. You got to be on the lookout this episode. Just be careful. Begin the grandiose <laughs> ideas. Know that Adam's already pre-planned it that you're going to fail. Okay? Nope. I Not this so character. This character is conscious first. Over you. Let me make yeah. the dumb calls this episode, because let me tell you, I got some some stuff. Adam, oh, go ahead. Whosoever haveth, oh, whosoever haveth the most hit points must openeth the door. Hey, well, that's so, Max. Mm, Not me anymore. Go ahead. Uh, your thing, goals... You know. uh, you want to gain entry to the temple stealthily, so you want to be able to get in there and look around without anybody knowing you're there. That's correct. Uh, convince the cadre to join you, and then learn the truth about Southern Wind. Like, figure out what his deal is and what's been going on with him. Mm-hmm. Does all sound good? Yep, sound good to me. Okay, all right. So, you've been given a, a tent within the uh, the encampment, the hidden encampment of Southern Wind. You are... Uh, being put up here while the the operations of this place continue, right? 
people are throughout the night and moon moon comes up moon goes down but over throughout the night there's still you can hear the sound of drills you can hear uh the uh the soldiers like talking and sort of strategizing and planning like nobody they, they seem to sleep in shifts so some go to sleep but others stay up all night practicing and and readying themselves for some dangerous upcoming thing um the uh the place like i said seems to have like give or take like a hundred people at a glance, but we haven't seen anything inside the forbidding temple. So this is an ancient temple, either of late dwarven or early human uh, architecture, uh, a, um, a temple that serves some deity, but we're not, we're not sure. And its surface has been decorated with uh, myriad skulls. Uh, most of them human, some probably dwarven uh, and, and other, but yeah, uh, skulls claimed in battle cover the front surface of this temple. Uh, and so I think probably unless I guess I want to, does anybody have anything they want to do during the night? Right? Like the first night I was asking because yeah, like the very first thing, cause you arrived as, uh, as the sun was setting, we saw the sunset, um, like gathering, uh, with the, we saw the priest and the chariot, uh, and then everything kind of goes back to, back to military business. Uh, over the uh, over the course of the night, but yeah, I mean, you can rest, you can do things. It's just dark now. I know Dan was going to sing a song, or at least he talked about it. Yeah, I was planning on doing that. Oh at some yeah, point, he was going to sing necessarily that song. immediately. But... Okay. Yeah. Okay. Are we? Uh, if I recall correctly, last episode, you said that there yeah. are people posted near the front of our tent but there's no one inside the tent with us correct like we're left to our own privacy somewhat you're not yeah you're not being guarded actively right it's not like there's anybody inside looking at you there may not even be anybody outside the tent um but this place is full of soldiers and you are strangers and so everywhere you go you are being observed okay but if we're inside the tent we're fine in the sense of privacy uh, yeah, I mean, it's a, a tent, so, you know, okay. conversation carries, but site-wise, yeah, if you're in the tent, there's nobody else in here with you. It's a very, very Spartan, like, the tent has been patched and repatched dozens of times. Um, it is to as close to military specification as they're going to get with the equipment that they have. Uh, inside, there are cots enough for, for all of you, and then some, like a few other people, um, and it's currently unoccupied, so they've, they've placed you in here uh, for the time being. Okay. Um, well, I think if the first night, I think the first night I'm basically going to like <clears throat> listen to see how loud or boisterous the camp is, or if it's rather quiet and maybe poke my head out, just see if there's any people, you know, on duty in terms of on watch that are patrols, anything like that. Try to yeah. get a good sense of everything. Yeah. Make a, uh, make a perception check. All right. Oh, yeah, Mark, per, uh, Mark Inspiration, if you don't have it already. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, everybody stuff. starts with in, in, yeah. Inspo, because we're doing now. I rolled a one. Oh, What's my distracting? <laughs> What's distracting? Yeah, right, why do you, yeah, why do you blow it? Is it just like, because you, yeah, you, normally you would, you'd have a much better shot at this, but something is, yeah, something prevents you. There isn't anything particularly, like, hidden, or if there is, you definitely can't see it, but, yeah, what, what's on, is something's on Maharib's mind, or... Like, yeah, I don't know. How, why do you why do you blow it so bad? I don't know what would be distracting me. Um, there wasn't really anything. That I, th I think I just bl yeah. I just blow it. I don't know if there's any one. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Thing. Yeah, like, maybe you're just not. It's just not your day. Yeah, it's just it's just bad. Like, yeah. you don't you don't see anything. Yeah. So it just to you, it just looks like. Well, you you used to be a, a mercenary, right? So, like, you've seen a variety. Maybe that's what of, I'm focused on: the fact that this is uh, uh, yeah uh, my past. Like this, this recalls my pre prior life. Yeah, it's too familiar. In yeah, a sense. I think that sounds about right. Yeah, so maybe you reject deeper <sighs> thinking about it because it reminds you of something you're trying to leave behind. Yeah, that's good. I agree with that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, but you don't really get a feel for the place or anything uh, yeah. because of that. So that's okay. what you Jordan, guys see. I, I like walk over, poke my head out and come back inside and, and go like, go back to wherever, whatever cot I've claimed uh, to lay down, but I don't do anything else apart from that. Okay. Yeah. 
Uh, is there anything else anybody wanted to do at night, or do you just rest and we catch up in the morning? Didn't um, didn't Ramus like before like we ended the session last time? Wasn't he talking about getting firewood or something like that, or was that just out of character? Uh, uh, I was talking out of character that like eventually I want to like sing a song and try to get people to come over to us, but I think we'll just spend the first night just okay. observing and seeing what the camp's like before we do that. Yeah. Okay. There was like a call of prayer too before I remember that everyone was being called over by a priest. I remember Adam describing that. That's right. Yeah. The, the, because mm-hmm. I made that stupid fucking uh, Pink Floyd quote in chat. Oh, I don't remember um, that. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. I did. just yeah, yeah. how I remembered that. <laughs> sure. Um, sure. Yep. I would love to go and see what their, what the hubbub is if they let me in. Let me go and observe or, you know. Yeah, sure. Yeah, you want to head out and, and go yeah. and watch? Okay. Yep. Yeah. Um. So when you leave, I'll, just, I'll you tell leave the, the tent, other guys if, like that's what I'm doing. Yeah. If you leave the tent immediately following the call to prayer, right, the ringing of the of the gong, uh, you find the soldiers uh, doing that kind of like they're not walking, but they're not running. There's this like jog, this sort of like hustle that they do and they've they've all run off to to join the the area over on the uh, over on the eastern side there is a um like an open area that they were practicing in before but it's been cleared and now standing in lines like perfect four by four like blocks uh you see the the soldiers that are awake everybody else is asleep because it's not part of their their watch they'll come up for morning prayer so they all run over and form up and then kind of at ease and on the back of this this war chariot right this quarter swords war chariot um, you see a, uh, a priest. Um, the priest is wearing uh, long, probably like black. They were black at some point robes, but the, the sun and time and wear have turned them gray, uh, especially kind of at the elbows, the knees and the shoulders. Uh, you can see they've, they've been again, like everything else around here, they've been repaired several times. Um, the priest is wearing a breastplate, which you recognize as every member of the, the any of the courts would. Uh, it is a part of the sacred vestments of the chariot, right, priest of the chariot, and uh, he has in his hand a saber that he's waving around while he's giving this very vitriolic speech. Um, he has uh, probably long hair that would be bound up in uh, like under a helmet most of the time, but he's got it off, and so it's down and it's like flapping around as he waves the sword, shouting. And you can see there's like fervor in this guy's eyes. Uh, he's got a short like goatee and then um, a scar running like from his collarbone up back across his neck. But it's probably longer than that. And so at you as you stand at the back of this this little assembly, it feels like. Like he, he's telling a story that everybody here has heard before, right? It's a it's an inspiring story of victory. Uh, you know, imbuing them with the the bravery and uh, valor of the chariot. And at certain points in the story, he poses like a rhetorical question, right? Like he'll say, and so there on the battlefield, the captain drew the drew the arrow from his wound and snapped it in half. Could he have been any braver? And they're all like, no, sir. And he says, and so the captain rose from the ground, bleeding from this wound and killed 16 more of his enemies before he himself fell. Could we expect any more? And they're like, no, sir. And so there's this back, this call and repeat, like they've clearly been through this before. And, uh, and yeah, so you're, you're standing at the back, uh, just watching this happen, uh, unless there's something you'd like to do in the middle of the, of the um, sermon. No, I would just, they, they, no one, now this is outside of the, t- of the little temple thing. Yeah, it's over here. Little parade oh. ground kind of area. Yeah. Okay. That's where they drill and and oh, gotcha. Okay. And okay. pray, and then the, the little box is like the ritual chariot. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. And the guy is standing on the, like on top of the chariot or in front of it or something. Standing on it, it's the it's the platform, and then there are two soldiers on either side who have chains over their shoulders, and they're holding the the chains. Normally, this would be like a goat, a war goat drawn chariot, right? A giant goat would pull pull the chariot, but um, you don't see any giant war goats around here, right? Um, I'm wondering if I can do like um like an insight check or something like that to see if he is. 
if this is something that is um, like a standard prayer or uh, uh, sermon, or if it's motivating them towards something that's coming. Yeah. Yeah. You can make a religion check, I think, for that. Okay. Oh, crit fail. No, I'm kidding. Man. Um, 24. <laughs> anybody any good at Dungeons and Dragons anymore? <laughs> <laughs> well, thankfully that for that ability. Yeah. So you got a, what, a 24? Yeah. Yeah. The worst you can do. I'm very disappointed in you. So, I know. <laughs> <laughs> 24. Terrible. Uh, okay, so you recognize this story. This is uh, like an apocryphal story uh, that gets passed around in the in the chariot. It's a very popular story in the military, and it's about endurance. And right? he's telling a story about no matter what, you cannot give up. Your body okay. may be broken, right? Your your sword may shatter, your spirit may fail, but you cannot give up. Every soldier's destiny is victory in this life or the next, or the next, if you give up, you abandon the warrior's spirit, and you lose your destiny. Your destiny is to win at any cost. If not today, then maybe in another life. You'll be reborn as a tougher, braver version of yourself, and you'll try again, right? And so it's both a story told, it's, it's a kind of an eve of, eve of battle story, because it's like, many of mm -hmm. you will die. That is good. You should, right? Like, it is honorable to die in battle. It is the warrior spirit that carries you into death, right? But there's nothing about this that seems like they're going to, there's no, there's no free zone. There's no energy that makes them, makes you feel like that's what's going to happen. This right. is a, maybe a higher octane story than you would expect for this situation. They seem to be in a, in a holding pattern, right? They're practicing, they're staying sharp, but it's not like you're seeing um, battle plans being drawn. People aren't scouting. There's no barricades being erected. So it doesn't look like they're going on the offensive or being, or planning on being attacked just staying in a state of like razor sharp readiness. Right. And you might see like 10 pillars watching this and like a slight smile as he's smoking his pipe, as he watches this, because this is the first taste of home that he's had in for fucking ever. Like yeah. this is, this is something that he knows, like this is order. This is the way it should be. Everybody lined up, everybody following the leader, the, the, you know, whether it be a religious leader or a general or something like that. And just the tiniest spark of like hope. Like if they can hold out here for as long as they have, perhaps there's hope for humanity, yeah. you know, but. And then he remembers like the dwarves and the embers and stuff and goes and, and then. It just solidifies the idea in his head that this is the way we survive this. We don't pull up. We don't like bury our heads in the sand here here before you is the product of the discipline gained of 10,000 years right here before you is the strength of of the pillar that holds up humanity here is the proof that heaven's structure works because these men are in hell right and have been for a decade but they're still mm -hmm. fighting they're still praying they're still like surviving through all this and uh, yeah, I could see how that would that would hearten you, right? Like you're seeing that even yeah. in this terrible place, and you've been surrounded by let's not mince words, primitives for the last however long, right? Like mm -hmm. it's it's a it's a nice taste of home, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you call them primitives, um, and I I look around uh, <laughs> the faces of the the people who are in the congregation. They all do. They they all look steadfast. Does any of them look like? Like uh, uh, scared, anxious, anything like that at all, or make uh, make an insight check. Okay, twenty six. Um, you feel a brief chill as you look across the face of these soldiers, because even in the eyes of the most like fervent soldier, even in the eyes of the bravest man there is some sense of uncertainty, right? Nobody, no human is purely like certain of their destiny because that certainty is afforded only to heaven. Only heaven really knows enough to free you from that, that uncertainty, that fear. Right. In the eyes of these men, you see nothing but a desire for victory. Um, nothing but that pure, intense hereness uh, that, that people on the edge with nothing left to lose hold. And so in a way, 
you know, looking at them, that that chill is a sense of feeling that they are benefiting from, but not necessarily any longer a part of humanity because they don't have they don't seem to have that vulnerability. Now, it's easy to feel that way when you're looking at a crowd of men and women dressed the same being addressed by a, a priest, right? Like it's easy to blend in here and it's easy to dehumanize them. But yeah, something about this gives you gives you the willies or whatever mm-hmm. the court of coins equivalent of the willies is. You have them. <laughs> the shillings. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right, for you, certainly. <laughs> yeah. So that's, that's right. the observations of 10 pillars of gold. You see this intense, like fervorousness uh, amongst cool. these guys. All right. And then, yeah, if I, I'll just continue to watch until the service is done. And, <laughs> um, yeah, you can, you can flash back to whoever. Yeah, sure. Okay. All right. So, uh, Berg and, uh, and Ramus, what are the two of you want to get up to? Uh, it might just be resting. If so, we can, we can have Dawn arrive. But... Yeah, I think I would just be resting the first night. There's nothing I specifically want to do. Yeah. Do you want to? Work on your Bible, Dan. If there's, I guess there's nothing else to do, so sure. Yeah, right? You got some time. Yeah. You have, I assume you brought it with you. I, I assume you brought like the tail of Ravenscrill yeah, like along so my, you could, yeah, you could work on it. Yeah, yeah work on yeah, it here. Okay. Then. All right. Uh, so what have we been using to test your writing of this? It's like religion, but with. I can't remember. See, I can't remember either. So. I think intelligence, I think it was intelligence and religion, which I think is just a normal religion check. So yeah, let's just do that for now. I'm not sure if I had something different. Okay. A 10. You got it. You had an 11 before. Uh, you rolled mm-hmm. a 10 now. This it's is why people have cool accolades, It's not the best <laughs> environment. You know? Yeah. 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 <laughs> cool. Okay. All right. Yeah. So you're, you're working on your, you're working on your, your book. You're, you're telling the story. Berg, what are you doing? You can hear the, the scratching of Ramus's, uh, uh, Ramus's quill, uh, quill on the page. Actually, I guess you wouldn't use a quill. You'd use a pot and a brush to write these characters. So, yeah, so you, you can hear Ramus kind of mumbling a little bit to himself and writing in his, in his book. Uh, what do you want to do? Um, he's probably just inspecting and looking at his new weapon with kind of just disgust. Not in, yeah. I think, I, they, didn't they take your weapons from you? You did say you collected our weapons, yeah. So, so you're thinking about your axe that you now don't have? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, he's, he's probably just really bored, honestly, just trying to sleep. And if maybe, maybe all the, the weapons the I've of, loved and lost. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. So yeah, just not much on else the to cot. do. It's just, a, it's just a tent. We can't really wander, you know, uh, a whole yeah. bunch. The, co- the cot's about. Here, so he's probably a bit. The cot's about like a foot shorter than you'd like it to be. <laughs> so you're kind of like on your side, like curled up a little, but you've slept on worse. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, you get, you get some rest, uh, 10 pillars. You, do you go back to the tent? Uh, I assume Maharib does, right? Maharib, you come back and you're like me. Yeah. Hang out. Yeah, yeah. Okay. 10 pillars. Yeah. 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 Uh, same. I or go back to the tent. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Okay. So, uh, you return to the tent. Uh, everybody tries to rest. You close your eyes and there's still like a fair bit of noise. There's not a lot of like shouting or anything, but you can hear people moving around. It's like the same amount of activity during the day. Um, and you eventually manage to get some rest. Uh, so if anybody, you know, has hit points they need to restore or any of that stuff, you take a long rest and you are awoken by that same sound, that same gong ringing because it is now time for the morning prayer. And so you hear the sounds of soldiers hastily getting up, uh, squaring away their their stuff, and then heading out to the uh, to the prayer area to pray for a uh, a day of uh, of strength and victory in the eyes of the chariot. So uh, yeah, so you wake up to that sound, and it's clear that they keep schedule by these these daily prayers, right? This wake up and go to sleep prayer. I, th- I think I pick up on that pretty quick, so I'll rush out to the just open up the tent. There's like. Is everyone going to this thing or do people remain or is it remain so the, in, in their, their stations as it were? The cadre tends to be in shifts. So the mm. prayer is everybody who slept at night is now waking up. They're going to pray. Then they're going to spend the day practicing training, whatever. And then the nighttime, they'll ring it again. That crew will go to bed. The other crew will wake up and then they'll stay up through the night doing the same. And so it seems like, about evenly mixed between the two, at least from what you've seen. 
Are there people still stationed right outside of our tent to like watch us or nope. we left our own devices? Nope. Okay. Yeah, nobody nobody to watch you. Um, when you come out of the tent this morning, you see sitting on the steps to the temple, uh, you see most loyal sword. Um, and he's got his you know, he's got his uniform on and he's just sitting on the steps. Uh, and uh yeah, he, he notices you come out of the out of the tent and he gives you the kind of like head the chin up like Morning, right? He doesn't say anything, but he just kind of gives you an, a look of acknowledgement, kind of up nods you and, yeah. and then goes back to watching. The, the okay. Plan. I mean, I'll give him, I, whether he sees it or not, I give him like a jovial wave of good morning. Um, but then I, I turn back into the tent. Uh, is everyone else up? Are you guys waking up asleep? What, what are y'all doing? I'm getting up. I'm definitely, as soon as, as soon as the bell rings, I get up. Okay. I, um, uh, I have a morning routine that I do okay. like, to keep myself like clean. I brush off like the dirt of, on my garments. I comb out my beard, my hair and all that stuff. Right. Ramus, are you up? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm getting up. I'm saying my morning prayers. I wouldn't interrupt that. Okay. I stand very <laughs> anticipatory, like right next, maybe even join <laughs> you on the ground. If you're like praying on the ground. I sit down next to you and wait for you to finish praying. Ramus right, is on the phone and you're like, mom, 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 yeah. mom. If, <laughs> if, you, if you're sitting there with like your eyes closed, maybe you open like one eye and I'm just sitting there cross arms staring straight at you waiting for you to finish praying. I, just, I, I finish up. May, may, the, may the elemental serve as the barrier, the light and the dark guide us as we serve harmony and I end my prayer. Okay. The second that it looks like you and your prayer. Adam, you're going to say something? The dwarves that are with you are paying close attention to the things that Ramus is saying. Um, they're not praying with him yet, but they're, they're paying attention to it. Okay. That's a whole, that's a side project. I'll, I'll jump into that later. Assume, so basically for them, they're amidst a bunch of humans and it's very uncomfortable for them. So assume that unless you want them somewhere, they're just in the tent and that's it, right? Sure. That they just will be here if you need them, but you can also say like, Oh, I, I'm going to bring them along or this person will be here. Yeah. Okay. The second you finish praying and, and maybe start to stand up, I'll stand up with you. We need to get inside that temple, Ramus today or tonight. It needs to happen. We're wasting time. Indeed. I, I don't know if this is a power play or, subterfuge but something is weird about this temple it is um there's tales of men have gone mad with power i fear that's not what's happened regardless of what it is we need to find out for ourselves uh, i have ways of getting inside but a distraction would that's be that's what she said <laughs> would that be what she would be anyways <laughs> <laughs> might, might be what he said. Uh, it's weird jokes in the Bible yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, we we need a distraction of some sort. Uh, I uh, I don't know. Uh, Ten pillars, you were out there the other day. What what were they saying? What were they talking about? Did they seem interested in whatever was occurring? What do you mean? Whatever was occurring. <clears throat> sure you spoke to people would were, were they on guard were they not they distracted I, I, I just observed i observed their service hmm. it was a a soldier's service it wasn't um like the regular citizen would go to the temple and pray to the star or the sun or something like that this was definitely geared towards um people in the military so it was very yeah the chariot right. the chariot is sort of the patron arcana of competition and victory right so your average person might go to the shrine to pray for like their favorite sports team to win but the sports team has their own shrine right like it's the military especially like anybody who's part of armed conflict mercenary companies will often carry like a that, mobile shrine to I the would chariot know all this, right like yeah. i'm very well versed in all totally this. adam yeah yeah would, would it make sense what was my was I was my a big enough character in the world in terms of mercenaries for them to know me by name? 
Uh, I don't think so. Okay. No, because you, I mean, you were only for, you were only, I mean, you had some levels before we met you because you didn't, you know, you didn't start at first, but yeah, I think, I yeah, joined I think you like would be like, or 12. yeah, you'd be like reasonably, reasonably well known, but probably better as like that Goliath mercenary, right? Or like maybe by your reputation, they would remember acts that you had performed, particularly while you were cruising around with Bahath. Right. Okay. Yeah. Um. All right. To continue the conversation, uh, well, that is interesting. I I had an idea, but perhaps there's a better one. But they seem to be the one to challenge others. Ten pillars when you were there. Could could we? What do you mean? Could I put myself to challenge whoever of the camp and earn some reputation? That perhaps might gain us entry somewhere. I mean, Berg, even if it's a strength, I'm sure he would win easily. Well, every every encampment of soldiers that I've ever been involved with or been among, they have downtime activities that usually involve some sort of brute strength competition, whether it be bare knuckle fighting or arm wrestling or right drinking. <laughs> like i i'd imagine that well then there's the point that this is unlike any it doesn't feel like any military camp that i've been a part of it has the semblance of it but underneath it's like it's like a, you see a suit of armor and you know that inside of that suit of armor is a person I'm not sure there's a person inside this suit of armor. I'm not sure if it's empty or if it's some foul thing. I don't know, but it doesn't feel right. Well, my first inclination when we first got here was under the guise of night to fly my way into the temple using stealth and whatever. I'm sure there's a window that's unlocked or something that they would well so watching. yeah here's here's the thing about the it's temple as far as you can tell the there's only the one mountain. entrance what? yeah it's built into the side of a mountain and so the surface of the stone the like living rock of the mountain they've carved back several feet to create this edifice with all these shelves and then there's the stairs that, and they're also carved out of the mountain front so there it's not actually it's not a building it's like the door leads into like maybe caves or How big or something. Door? And there's just, there's just the one entrance. It's big. It's like wide enough that you could get like two horse drawn carriages through it you know, going though. in both directions. It's, it's pretty grandiose. Like 15 feet, probably at the center. So, yeah, I could, I could fly in to the top of it and crawl on the top potentially. Right. If I'm, if I'm still, if I, I mean, roll stealthily yeah. enough, like I could just sit at the top of the, Right. The entryway and yes. going okay. that way. Okay, I understand what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Anyways, you want to be the mom from Hereditary. <laughs> yes, yeah. I, okay. I say that out loud. All right. Uh, tried to sneak my way into the temple, but I don't know what it looks like inside. It might be kind of going at it blind. But we need to get in there. We're wasting time, as I told Ramus. Agreed. Well, perhaps we see if we're allowed in right now. We it's been overnight. Maybe we're allowed in this morning. The lieutenant uh, has already noticed me. And I don't know. We could go ask him, but I don't think it's going to go well. And if anything, it will raise his own awareness that perhaps we seek entry in the, to begin with. Well, I. Well. It's only. It's only following that we'd be curious about the one place that he said we're not allowed to go. Right. Sure. He's expecting questions. I'm but, not going to stay in this tent for weeks or however long this will take. Days even. We don't have the time. I agree. I think we all are in agreement on that. We should talk to um I'm sorry uh, um the lieutenant, who cares? Southern Wind. We should talk to Southern Wind Yes. as soon as we possibly can, if he will grant us audience. Right. If we're I not have... allowed in, we'll find a way in, one way or another. Why don't we do this 
you and Ramus go and speak with the lieutenant, and me and Berg will see what's going on in the camp. I'm sure the soldiers will take a liking to Berg. Mm. Very well. Or not. Well, we'll find out one way or the other, Berg. <laughs> All right, uh, let's go. Ramus, you're with me. Yeah. Always. So who who's going to talk to uh, most loyal sword? Ramus. Uh, me and Ramus. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, let's start there. All right. So the two of you uh, leave the tent. Every, you all leave the tent and we stick the camera sticks with 10 pillars and Ramus. And yeah, he's still he's still where he was before. Right. Sitting on the sitting on the steps. Only now he's got a leather bound uh, like a book. And it's clear that it's been like beaten up pretty badly over the course of time, right? It's it's a little floppy and you know the the leather on the outside is all cracked and and weathered and he's he's writing in it and he's got a a brush and he's got it sitting on his lap and he's he's writing kind of casually and you, know, um, you can see him like thinking to himself as you uh, as before you I forget yeah. before I forget um unless we forget we have three like dwarves with like hanging out with us, right? Yeah, they're just in the tent all the time unless you want them to be somewhere else. Right, I for I I forget that they're there. Um, yeah. And then not but, not uh, too far away, not too far away. You have a comatose mutant giant. Right, I'm wondering. Yeah, she's if, pretending to be a statue. Yeah, the funny in, thing like, is, if nobody, form, it's fine. If nobody goes, if nobody goes to wake her up, she might just be a statue forever. Like if you die here or abandon her, she has no reason to know like to wake up. So she just wait. Oh, oh, that's 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 a good romantic story there. <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> no, I was wondering if, if the dwarves would go with with Maharib and Berg. The uh, dwarves do not want to go soldiers. anywhere. They are very they uncomfortable here. Oh, no. okay, that's fine. If they want to stay <laughs> no, there, they're just like make sense. please do that your business sense. and then come back and get us because we don't want to be seen. We don't want to go out there. These humans, gotcha. yeah. they're they're making I mean, us they're uncomfortable. Humans and, all, and it's Court of Coins like soldiers. Why the fuck would they want to be around this? Yes. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. It doesn't make any sense. Anyway, yeah. I just wanted to make sure that we're a little piece of business. Like, oh, we got three people that are. Yeah. They're so tiny. Anything. It's very easy to miss them too. So yeah. it's okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Okay, so, so you, uh, yeah, you walk out and you see, you see most, most little certain. He sees you and he's, he waves. He's like, morning boys. They're beautiful day in the lost legion. Quick. I need a synonym for brave. Courageous. Fearless. And he nods. Like, Fearless. I think it's a good one. He like, writes it down. He slams the book shut and he, uh, he puts it down next to him. Uh, and, uh, and he says, uh, you boys sleep all right? I mean, I know it's not a hotel in the capital or anything, but it does us all right. Cold air oh, does period. the body good. He, he nods and he, uh, he says, uh, <laughs> though this far south, it never really gets that cold. I was stationed for a while up north in the mountains. Mm, that's cold. You raised in the jungles down here. You don't know. You don't know real cold. I hear north end of the Court of Coins is even worse. And he, he looks at you, Ten Pillars, and says, uh, you folks still got a hobgoblin problem up there? Last I checked. He nods. He's like, enemies at every side, my man. They're everywhere. Some bullshit. <laughs> I don't think I could have put it better myself. It is indeed some bullshit. Yeah. And he nods. He's like, that's all you can do. Right? You wake up in the goddamn morning and you fight off the bullshit as best you can. Hit your wagon to the right star and I don't know. Maybe you get reborn as somebody better. Let's hope. <laughs> um, Nods. I remember you saying that if we were late for our morning meal, we wouldn't get it. So have we missed it already or is it still being served? I came as soon as I heard the gong. And, uh, and he says, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Should get you fed. Come on. And he gets up. And he like oh, stretches his back like he's like he's been sitting too long. 
Uh, and uh, and he says, uh, there, stood, there still should be some chow. Now, you thought the beds were bad. We're just trying to keep everybody alive around here, you know? And he, he, he gestures to be like, let's, let's walk over here and, and go check it out. And so the two of you, or the three of you, are walking across the, the field towards where the, the priest was. And when you get there, you see that he's finished his, he's finished his sermon, and now his assistants are handing out rations to the guards. And the guards are waiting in perfect lines in the same way. Each one takes rations and then walks off uh, and goes over to, uh, I guess, their tent. They get, uh, they get fed and they go and sit down at the tent and they eat. And, uh, and he says, uh, of course, you're strangers, so you got to be at the back of the line. We got to keep the boys ready to fight. But uh, yeah. food's food. Do you find yourself being attacked a lot up here? He um he shakes his head. Not lately. Seems like most of the worst fighting's calmed a little. It's only a matter of time. And he glances at the temple and he says, He's got big plans. We're just waiting for the right time. Spring the trap or whatever. Like tigers, you know? Down low. Amidst the foliage, waiting for that opportunity. We'll wait forever, man. I couldn't help but notice that this place seems to always be surrounded by fog. Is that natural, or is the, are he the gestures, priests helping with that? He, he, he just gestures, and he says, um, Heaven protects their own. We're on a blessed mission. Hey, this isn't just another military exercise. We're the last hope, man. With a finger in the dam, you know? We fall. That's it. So we got to hold out. Wait for our time to strike. Until then, he gestures above him. <clears throat> Heaven protects. Surely, this plan must be brilliant. Because as someone who is, oh, good. Oh, yeah, he, he nods and he, he says, uh, yeah, man, whatever it's going to be, it's going to be big. But my name's not Shirley, man. <laughs> <laughs> I just, uh, I look around and I see the confidence of the military, of the, of the court of swords, of, of the southern wind. He put... I've never seen such a a ready group. However, he smile. He's I, just smiling and nodding, like, "Yeah, man, I, yeah." I can't help but notice that. I mean, you have heard the numbers that are being accrued by the forces, uh, the dead, and they are staggering. Even with the best. Soldiers in the world, they could still be drowned by the ocean. That is These the soldiers country. aren't brave, man. It's not about bravery. Bravery gets taken away from you. Every brave man ends up shitting his pants in the face of real danger. What you're looking at here is an absence of fear, right? These men don't even remember fear. Like They weren't born capable of feeling it. Nothing scares them. That's worth a thousand swords. I understand that. And I, I'm astounded by it. But I think I'm just saying a matter of numbers. There's 20, 30, maybe even 100 to one odds against you. He's, he's grinning while you say that. And he, uh, and he says, uh, yeah, man, exciting, isn't it? Listen, man, oh. we're not big on logistics around here. These men, they all know you, you kill an enemy once, you got to kill him at least one more time. So that puts us at 200 to one odds. That's even more exciting. I look around at these. These beautiful fighters, and I think 
they're going to come back as something real special. We are building a new world for our own resurrection, man. And he just kind of shakes his head like, God, it's beautiful. Like he's just kind of like staring off into the imagined future. Who do you... Be, it, it, I know you fight and you do what you do at the behest of Southern Wind. But is there a future you fight for? Do you fight for any other people besides yourselves? The common farmer, the hunters, yeah. the... Yeah, he, he shakes his head and he's like, no, man, that shit's just going to slow you down. Around here, everything's streamlined. We fight because we've got to fight. You understand? Fighting is what these men were made for. They don't even think about why anymore. Why is the thing, man? You fight for the pure, feral thrill of it. For victory, for blood, and the dirt. One more skull for the wall, man. Glorious. Real glorious. And How I long is he been hand. working on this big plan? And he turns, as if like noticing you for the first time, Ramus. He looks at you and he, he says, uh, uh, the captain works at his own pace. He's going to be ready when he's ready. Till then, ours is but to wait. Does the, uh, does the captain take audiences or? And he, uh, he nods, he says, yeah, sometimes, man, I, I talked to him last night, told him all about you. Said you came here from the court of coins. He seemed real interested, man, but it's going to take him some time to process. He's got a plan and now he's got to fit you into it. But I'm sure there's space, you know, everything in its order. All things under heaven, man. You just got to be patient. Like a spider. Well, I can speak for me. But I can't speak for the rest of my compatriots. And Remus is here to speak for himself. But the group we came yeah, with is a very impatient that's... bunch. And they might uh, lose their patience eventually. As he's speaking, I'm, I'm making like a medicine check on him. Make sure like he's not... Like his brain is there. Yeah, okay. Like he's not like, yeah. Like lost. Yeah, make his... a... yeah, right. You're just looking for like, he's got, yeah. he's got like a lobotomy scar on the side of his head. Yeah. Make, make that medicine check. 18. Okay. Um, he is undernourished, a little overstimulated. Uh, and he's got a pretty bad heat rash on his neck that he keeps scratching. But otherwise he seems to be in like better health than maybe you would expect. Of someone in this yeah. position. All right. You can go ahead, Zeke. Okay. Um, I forgot what I was saying. <laughs> um, oh, he said he's going to work us into the plan. Yeah, you just got to wait. That we, were in, that we were impatient. Oh, my, the patience. Yeah. Right, right, right. The patience yeah. of my compatriots might run thin. Um, and uh it'll be like a spider man some kind of spider man oh that's a good idea i should write that down <laughs> um i understand there's a hierarchy and there's an order to things i appreciate that in fact it's refreshing to see again after being on the road for as long as i have but The urgency of the matter. I don't know if you, if your scouts have gone far enough to see the amassing of the armies that are aiming to fight against us and run over us. But it will be soon, and it will be devastating. Soon? <laughs> soon is relative, man. Look, and he, he points and you see a soldier, you see two soldiers and they're, they're fighting with, with their swords. They're all, you know, doing their sparring. And you, you look at the two of them. One of them is older, right? maybe in his like mid, mid 40s. The other can't, can't be more than like 20, which means 
this war has been going on for half of this person's life. Uh, and he, he points and he, he says, um, we got all kinds, man. We've been testing everybody. Some of these people, this is their second time through. We're in it for the long game, man. One of us dies. They're going to come on back. They're going to ride that chariot right back here. And they're going to fight. And they're going to die. And they're going to fight again, man. And that's how it works until we win. You just got to think bigger. Don't get so caught up in the moment. When you say they come back, are you saying that as an idea or they come back in a different form like the wheel? Or are you saying they personally, themselves, that exact person comes back? And he shakes his head like, what do you, what do you mean, man? They're, they come back like anybody does. You serve heaven the way you're supposed to, and you get your reward in the next life. Some of these boys, one serving wasn't enough. They're hungry, man. Hungry for it. And I kind of laugh this off just to see his reaction. I'm, I go, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm in my age. I must have confused, must have been confused. I, I got the impression that. Death wasn't accepting any of your men, and they would just come back. <laughs> and he, he shakes his head, and he says, No, man, you're looking at the cream of the crop around here. These people, when they die, they're going to come back better, stronger, ready to fight, and we got to wait until they can pick up a sword, but as soon as they can, you just know their soul's going to drag them back here. Well, the captain you lead knows. sounds pretty brilliant. And yeah, he, he turns to your rims. He's like, yeah, brilliant. <laughs> Damn right. Have, have you ever like just like stared at a picture man real close? And like it just like looks different. But then like you back away and like it looks different again. Just like you need like looking at it one way. It looks one way, and you look go a different way. It looks a different way. He kind of nods, like, "Yeah, maybe." <laughs> well, you see, you guys have all been looking at this picture from here, like right next to it. But see, we we come from outside of the picture, man. So, what if we helped you guys with your plan by giving you different perspective as someone who hasn't seen it before? We might be able to help your captain, just like. Found some ideas off him, man. You know what I'm saying? And he, he, he squints at you and he, he says, uh, you can't kill an army with perspective, man. We need swords and shields and food no, and gold, man. No, not the man. army. Not the army. The plan, man. It's your boss, man. He's in there planning. That's what we do, my brother. <laughs> Make a uh, make a persuasion roll. <laughs> well, I was I, I was waiting for a moment to jump in because I wanted to help him with that. Okay, yeah, yeah. If you have a, a way to back him up, yeah. No, okay. I just wanted to say, yes, like like Ramus is saying, it's 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 like looking at a cloud and you see a dragon, but I look at it and I see a horse and a rider or something like that. It's just a different set of eyes, I think. It's always beneficial. All right, make that make that persuade check. Yeah, okay, I'll use my lucky to do it again. Okay. <laughs> yeah, seems good. That's there better. Go. It's not a nine. It's a twenty three. Okay, <laughs> so uh, he uh, he nods and and he says, um, "I mean, until until the captain says otherwise, I can't let anybody go in there." So. It's going to have to be you and me for now, but my mind is open and I am down to hear whatever information you have and I'll send it along to the captain. But until he gives me the say so to let you in, you can't go into the inner sanctum. Those are the rules. God, it must be nice in there, man. 
He makes a face. <laughs> you don't, you, you, you can make an insight check to figure out what the face means, but s- something happens to his face. There is an expression. 13. All right. Yeah. Um, I mean, you're both observing this guy. So let's, let's treat it like you have, ad, uh, have advantage. So let's, let's take that 30. Uh, something about going into the temple is d- deeply, deeply unnerving to this guy. Like he covers it real quick. By nodding and being like, yeah, man, it's a trip in there. But something, you see him be like, yeah, no, it's, yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, there's something, something about the interior of this place, like, deeply unsettles him. Hmm. I, I glance at Tim Pillars, like, just give him that look of, Understand that something was off with what he just said. It's a subtle nod. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Yeah. So you both notice it. Well, just so this information, this different set of eyes, so to speak, is not convoluted from one person to the next. And it's not that we don't trust you, but. Have you ever told someone something and they tell the next person something and something just a little bit is different? We need it to be exact. We need to know from our lips to his ears. So no offense meant, but when he's ready to speak to us, we'll tell him what we know. No offense taken, my friend. I understand where I'm at, the chain of command, and it's not the top. As soon as the captain gives me the word, I will come running. I promise you that so you can have your meeting, deliver whatever perspective you happen to have on this current situation. As you can imagine, news isn't exactly easy to come by around here most of the time. So I'm sure it's just a matter of time. You just got to show the captain you've got patience. Patience, man. Gotta wait. And I'm sure by this time I'm like we're in the, getting in the into the food part of the line, and I'm fucking just there's this sloppy shit just like being served like in a helmet or on a tin plate or something like that. Yeah, like they have they have unified. They still like all of all the soldiers still have their mess kit or have inherited okay. one from someone else. Um, mm-hmm. And somebody somebody donates one to you, right? Like the the priest have you one, and yeah, they're given they're given like uh, dry rations, and then it's supplemented by. And I, I think this is this is something that obviously like Ramus you'd recognize. The priest is is casting spells to feed these people, right? Like it's it's mana from heaven, so there is mm-hmm. magical heaven slop that is served alongside whatever rations they have to kind of cut the rations to help them last longer. Uh, and so you're given you're given a meal uh, by the uh, by the priest. And I think that when you walk up, the priest looks sort of sternly down at the two of you, especially Ramus, right? And it's not a disapproving look. It's just a like a stern look. This is a stern guy. His uh, forehead is all beaded with sweat. Uh, and um, you can see that, like, you know, standing on the on the chariot and waving his sword around like it takes it takes something out of him. Right. It's exhausting. Uh, and he looks sternly at the two of you. And then most loyal sword says. These are the strangers I told you about. Well, some of them, there's, there's some in the tent and uh, I don't know, but maybe, maybe you could, you guys should come to the nightly sermon. And the priest looks at 10 pillars and he says, most loyal sword. I believe one of our guests has already benefited from one of my sermons. What's your name? And he, he looks at you, 10 pillars. I am Ten Pillars of Gold, Special Envoy from the Court of Coins. And you? He puts his hand to his chest and he says, uh, I am a most humble servant of the chariot. The soldiers around here call me Hua, which I understand was the name of their old priest. I have another name, but this is the one I use now. And he turns to you, Ramus, and he says, Your vestments... Very interesting. Who are you? I am Ramus Krill of the Southern <laughs> Province, the Riverlands. And he, he nods solemnly and he says, I am sorry. 
These have been hard years for all of us, but I'm from the North. I couldn't possibly understand how you must feel. You have my condolences and my promise. We will push back this threat and make them pay for what they've done. We will. All of us will. Um. Okay, I I talked to uh, Hua. <clears throat> yeah, and uh, and he's still he's still standing up on the on the like chariot. Like you were served by his assistants, and he's still standing up, like st- like looking down at you. So you have to tilt your head up to to talk to him. And there's like the sun kind of behind him, so you're squinting a little. That was a magnificent service you gave last night, I must say. Do you, are you the only one who makes, who, uh, who performs the services? Are there more priests like you, or are you the... He, sh- he, sh- he shakes his head. He says, um, we are one and all loyal servants of the chariot, the arcana, and heaven, but I am the only one ordained to deliver these servants. To perform the miracles. I pulled Ramus like in close to ask him, do you think that offering to help with the creation of the food and the water for the soldiers would ingratiate us to them? He looks like he's overworked. Hmm. Well, maybe to this man, but he could be prideful. He might be thinking that I'm I'm helping him because he's too weak. I we mm. must be careful. I'll leave it to you then. I just wanted to bring up the idea. Thank you for the food, and I take it, and I I move on, like to go find a place to sit and eat it. Okay. Uh. Yeah. So. Um. I think probably the uh, lieutenant stays, and he he says to you, he's like. Feel free to wander around. Just don't get in anybody's way. We've got protocols around here, but he gestures everything besides the temple. It's all yours. <laughs> and he he turns back and he says, "Uh, well, I got to talk to you. Come, come here a second. And the two of them go off to talk about some thing or other. Um. So meanwhile, uh, Berg and Maharib. What are the two of you going to get up to? What are you doing? Well? What the hell is, is taking them so long? I don't know, man. What, dude? What's that, man? What's going on, man? What the fuck yeah, is... What are, you guys? what are they doing? <laughs> We're going to um, do silly voices, too. Yeah. Uh, I don't have any particular plans apart from under the guise of looking like we're just getting... A stroll in uh, to try to like learn the patrols and routines of everyone in the camp to know when would be the best time to uh, yeah make an attempt at getting inside this temple. So Berg, I don't know okay. if you have any goals, but that's like maybe if you try to have a conversation with Maharib, like you'd notice that I seem very disinterested in a conversation. I'm very distracted and like just. Yeah, looking I mean, a little bit yeah, longer at like a guy walking down what seems to be a patrol because maybe he's a guard or that type of stuff for sure. Yeah, Maharib, maybe, can you maybe can you make a per- l- make a perception l- check real quick? Sorry, Max, to cut you off. I just wanna I wanna see if Maharib uh, notices. That's something. fine. Who cares, man? Eleven. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. So no 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 new no new information from yesterday. You're still kind of like just getting a lay of the land. Yep. Uh, sorry, Max. Please. Um, no, I was saying maybe it comes in like, like you, Berg's been trying to get your attention, but it's like just been muffled. And then, it, you know, it comes in like after a grenade went off slowly and then you hear him like, Maharib. What? Hello. What? Yes. Sorry. But what, what is it? i been trying to get your attention for like a couple minutes. Uh, I apologize. I'm that guard right there. I'm, I think he patrols almost every 30 minutes up and down that path. But it, it doesn't matter. What, what Do you need something? I'm bored. I want to do something. We're supposed to walk around and see the camp. Right. Not stare. Right? Oh, of course, yes. Uh, where, where would you like to go, Berg? I kind of like, as if I'm a tour 
guy to kind of gesture out <laughs> yeah. to the camp and maybe like a couple of crickets Where do you chirp go? <laughs> or some birds, <laughs> some birds fly yeah. off as I say that. And it looks very boring. I, I don't know. I want to move. I'm growing very not still feeling. He like looks at you like, did you get that? Are, are, you, are you saying you're bored? Restless? Is that the word? That one. Yeah. That's the one. <laughs> I get it. I understand. Um, well, before, that's not, this is probably an odd thing to say, Berg, and I don't mean this offensively, but let's try not to stand out in whatever we do. Uh, do you understand? This is the look he's giving you, like, <laughs> how the uh, fuck am i supposed to not stand out <laughs> berg I, I know what that i i trust seen all these humans <laughs> i am a very tall goliath i know that it's going to be very difficult for the both of us but hmm. there's a way to stand out but not remain memorable do you understand that as much as i can We'll be fine. Uh, Where would you like to go? Anywhere. Let's just go walk around. Good to know land in case things go bad. Absolutely. Uh, And I start walking um, probably like the opposite direction of what Ramus and Tim Pillars went. Um, And we just start walking. So I guess tell us what we walk past and see and all that stuff. Yeah. So mostly, like you said, there is a perimeter guard. You can also see that up on the, I guess you, if you look up you from down here, you don't really see the fog that much. Like there's a faint haze in the air, almost like what, like very thin water vapor or droplets kind of hanging in there. So there's a thin phase from haze from down here. Sunlight comes in. There are guards kind of at either end of the little valley, the little Canyon that you're in. Uh, and then in various places up on the canyon, those guards that they basically like caught you before you can see them and they're watching down into the into the canyon. And then everybody else is either asleep or is training. Right. So the priest has cleared the yard and now they are practicing drills. Uh, and if you watch the drills for a while, it seems to you, Mahari, that they have developed like a new fighting style. So the way these guys fight is one man with a spear and then behind him, a man with a machete. And they are practicing this, this strike maneuver where the man with the spear stabs a target and drives it to the ground and holds it there. And the man with the machete runs up and chops its head off. Right. And they're practicing this maneuver over and over while being drilled by one of the like sergeants <laughs> or whatever. And you, you watch them do this. The sergeant is giving them advice and uh, telling them like how to how to improve their technique. Uh, and you, you see that. I, um, the temple player, itself. And I think my yep. as a player or as a character would immediately think they're doing this because they're going to fight undead. Right. Yes, definitely. Like they've developed a fighting style for killing someone twice. Right. Because the force of the spear strike would be enough to kill a person. But then having somebody come like around the corner and hack the head off. Done deal. Right. So killing them before they can before they can rise. So uh, you can see that they they. You're getting insight into the behavior of them as a structural unit. So you're watching these these men and women have focused their talents on specifically fighting a they're like an anti undead kill squad. Right. Um, they have spent the last decade perfecting this fighting style. And um, and that's the thing you see. You also notice that none of them wear insignias of rank. They wear uh, armor, right? They have a a sort of uniform, but everybody's armor is like missing a piece or has something replaced. So their um, uniform discipline is pretty lax, but many of them have uh, tattoos of like cloud motifs. Um, So you notice this on like one of them uh, has a kind of like a whirlwind coming up under their collar and onto the back of their neck. Uh, Another has like a a sleeve of uh, of blue and and white uh, cloud tattoos that seems to be a way that they've all kind of bonded together. And that's pretty normal. Like you've been in military units that all share like tattoos or clothes or something like that. Um, And so, yeah, so you, you watch this and you see, I think similarly to what 10 pillars saw, you see that these people have a almost preternatural discipline. They move with a fluid exactness, right? The kinds of things that the Sergeant is adjusting are like fractions of inches, right? Where he's like, 
you struck here when you should strike here. And most people wouldn't notice the difference. It looks like he's tapping the same spot, but they're very, very practiced and very specifically trying for like certain things. Um, you know, they're, they're not, um, they're not just general soldiers. They're all very practiced and skilled. Okay. Um, you have any questions about anything? Are you looking for anything in particular? You mentioned that we're kind of in like a, since we're in the mountains, that there is a heavy sense of fog in here. It, like how much, what, what's visibility on a general, so what's weird general is, day? Yeah. So from, from outside the canyon, you might not even notice it, right? You might really? just see like a bank of fog on some low land and it's hidden under it. But from down here, looking up at where the fog bank was, you just see a faint haziness in the air, just like dust particles or, or okay. droplets, right? So uh, clearly you are under the magic umbrella, right? Whatever blocked you from finding this place, you can see through it from here. And it's quite bright. It's as bright as the day is, right? So sunlight is coming down into, uh, into this canyon and uh, warming, warming the earth and, you know. Sure. Yeah. Um, Lots aside, of visibility out here. Aside from the tents and the training ground and the temple, is there any other points of interest uh, within the camp while we're walking around? Um, no, the um, the wagon, the the chariot wagon that uh, the priest used, gets moved uh, over to the entrance of the temple, and then they they basically like refit it so that it is a uh, it's a shrine. So. Yeah, so they move it over there whenever it's not being used. So they, they pull it over there, they set it down, and uh, it now just acts as a like a general sort of shrine to the um, uh, thing. Now, nobody around here has any sacrifices to make, right? They don't have you know a bouquet of marigolds to lay at the feet of, uh, of some bodhisattva of war, but um, it's clear from the tarnish and the polishing of the handles and like the anything you could reach with one hand as you walk by it. Uh, it's all very highly polished, kind of like an old statue. You know how like the hand of a statue will be bright and the rest of the statue will be kind of tarnished. Um, that's that's what you see on this this little chariot wagon uh, that's sitting over here now. OK, and I think it's safe to say that everything seems very much regimented and run on time, right? Like it's very precise yes. uh, from in the camp. Yeah, to the point where like like 10 pillars tried to point out earlier there's no downtime here. Nobody is like, like with soldiers, you'll see them sitting around a fire drinking or talking or playing cards, or I guess it'd be like Mahjong in this case. Um, none of that. They're either asleep or practicing. If you're not practicing, you're sleeping. If you're not sleeping, go practice. Right. So that's it. There's no at ease time. There's no, like, unless it's hidden away somewhere, these guys just seem to have no need for, um, uh, for this kind of thing. Okay. Do we, uh, when, when we're looking around, do, do my eyes meet the gaze of any others as if we're being paid close attention to? No, nobody seems to notice you. They just ignore you completely. Huh. Okay. Yeah. And then final question. Is anyone looking up? <laughs> Is there anyone kind um, of like looking uh, for air attacks or I don't know. It's less that I'm going to here. I'll draw, I'll draw like a cutaway of the side. So if it's this just, is the you can't mountain. really cause we're in like an embankment. Yeah, this is the canyon, right? So the, I mean, I guess it's more flat on the bottom. Yeah. Um, but basically there's the temple entrance here and there's okay. tents. Like if you're looking at it side on and then there are guards like on the ground, but there's also guards up on the canyon walls, right? Oh, okay. okay. And then, and then from outside, there's a bank of fog there. I gotcha. Okay. Fuck, that's going to be hard. All right. And these guys have bows, I assume. Yeah. They're cooked with bows and, and spears and swords, scimitars or whatever. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, then I, I guess if, if Berg doesn't have a conversation, like I'm much more interested. Sorry, Berg. And everything else that's going around in the camp uh, <laughs> that I am having a conversation right. with Berg. Okay. Um, well, and I guess the question to you is like, I mean, you go on this walk with Mahari Berg. So, is there anything that you're looking right. for, uh, and you're keeping your eyes out for, particularly? Um, I guess Berg's studying the way they're moving and how they, you know, this this fighting style. Um, while also keeping tabs on like where their like barracks are, where are the weapons, where where did they take his weapons to, like speculating, you know, layouts of the camp and things like that, in case he needs to try to go yep. get his recover his weapon and. Things like that. Yeah, you get the you get the impression that each soldier has his own spear or machete, right? Because that's the that's the way the cadre fights. So if you look at a, a given soldier, 
Um, everybody has short stabbing swords, right? little like long knives, basically, as their sidearm. That's the their equivalent of that. And then half of them have spears and half of them have machetes and they are they're paired up. Right. So they're they're grouped up in that way. The machete people keep track of their machetes. The spear people keep track of their spears. There's no place they store them. And um, there is there is some some personalization to the weapons, right? Like you see one guy with a spear and it has a blue like a blue feather hanging off of the end of it. Uh, some of the machetes have like acid etching on them, uh, symbols of uh, of wind or clouds. That seems to be the motif. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, so there's no place they store weapons necessarily. Uh, and then. Um, yeah, there there isn't one barracks. There's all these tents and each tent holds you know, 16 guys or 32 guys or whatever. Uh, and then, yeah. And then there's a few empty ones, obviously. This place has got to smell terrible in those tents. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, they're big, they're big, like barracks tents, right? They're not like little pup tents. Even the one you're in, there's lots more room than any of you need. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, I guess that's what he's doing. If Mahari was like going off doing his own thing, like, oh no, I'm really... I'm very much next to your side. So if you just like what you did before, like try to get my attention, I'll I'll give it to you. Maybe Berg's like staring at you for a second, and just like, what's your plan? What? Like what? Sorry, this. You see that person there on the valley? He's got a my plan. What do you mean? You've been staring at specific things. Like your mind is working. I can see it. Mm -hmm. Uh, Are we, how close to other people are we? In a sense. Well, you're no, you're, you're no closer than a meter. I'll tell you that. (laughs) Uh, There's people, there's people around. um, But if you want to have a hushed conversation, you could find a place where you assume you'd be out of your shot. Yeah, that's what I do. Maybe I'd like grab you. Come over here. Yeah. Go to a hushed spot. As Adam said, I'm going to try to get inside that temple. Yeah. How? What is? What are you thinking? Well, I'm I'm hoping that at night, at least, that it'll give me cover. I cut a hole in the tent and fly outside of it and go to the temple. Go in under the guise of night. I don't have any armor or anything, so I'll be quiet. Maybe Ramus can help something. I don't know. I haven't asked him. You weren't able to fly before. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, not at all. Okay, I'm just well, making sure. Time. Just making sure. When Berg and and Max like have the same kind of like, <laughs> it's so good when that shit lines no, up. I mean, yeah. I thought about it before. I, when when he when he yeah. mentioned it before, Word. you know, like I was just like. <laughs> Okay, and plus we were in a group, yeah. so I was seeing if you, any of you guys mentioned mentioned it. But now that you've said it again, and then Berg can like for sure it wasn't like a misspeak or whatever. Um, Berg's like looks at you and like fly. You fly now. A lot <laughs> happened, Berg. It was um, uh, yes, for a short time, long enough that I can get inside, hopefully. What the hell happened to you? It is as what I said earlier a lot. I see the world for what it truly is now, not what your eyes believe it to be. What are you better than me now? Is that it? I can fly. Can you? (laughs) <laughs> maybe, maybe there's like a smile at the end of that <laughs> checkmate <orc. laughs> there, there's like a slight hesitation when he says that afterwards just to see how Berg reacts and before Berg can like truly fully react uh, Berg I'm joking I'm, of course not I don't mean that I just have 
I can do other things. You'll always be the strongest, Berg, without a doubt. <laughs> of course you're in charge. Yeah. Everyone knows it. Of course. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I just, I just love the idea of like talking to a friend you haven't seen in a while and like they've got a new haircut and they're dressed differently than the last time you saw them. You're like, yeah, good catching up with you. And they're like, yeah, you too. Maharib away. And then fly <laughs> off. And you're just like, yeah. what the fuck just happened? Yeah. Peter, yeah. Peter Pan song plays. He can fly. Yeah. He can fly. <laughs> yeah, I think he responds. You can be like, I wish I could fly, but. I can throw boulders and things that try to fly away from me. Right. It'd be pointless Something. to fly around you. You just hit me with a boulder. Probably. Mm. Well, good. You can fly. Maybe. Maybe that will be enough. Helpful. We'll see. They have a lot of guards with bows on this valley. They were good enough to sneak up next to us, so I don't know. If I get caught, it will not be good. I'll know that much. Maybe we should see what Ramos and Jen Hillos have found, if anything. Absolutely, Ed. I agree. Not just... Tell them about your flying plan. I would agree. I've been trying to find the routines and regiments of the guards here, but I've had. It's too close to home. Reminds me of what I used to be. I came up in these camps, these mercenary tents. It's hard to get past that. I too. Been in places like this. Less creepy and weird, though. Never in a valley with the temple that others are not allowed in. No, that's not 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 for me as well. It is creepy. More cult feel, mm. less military. That is true. Maybe they found out more about that. Let's find them. Yep, yeah. I agree. Me, <clears throat> I guess go back to the tent maybe after. Kind of walk in yeah. the camp for the day. Seems about right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you you return to the ten. I think probably Ramus and Ten Pillars. You end up there too, right? Um. And uh, yeah, maybe that's maybe that's the shot, right? Maybe it's everybody returning to the tent and kind of looking at each other like, "So what did you learn?" <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, and then we'll we'll take our break here. Cool. All right. Let's take a break. We'll come back. So I got two hours left of roleplay quarter swords to go. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with more right after this. We'll see you then. <laughs> 